12 weeks after I had the surgery, I couldn't even jack off. Mm. And he's out there in an NFL game. Like, mm-hmm. runner, there's no way that he was 100%. Granted, I think he has better. switch hands? I think he, he what, go with a stranger? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's not the same. I mean, you definitely did. It's not, no. You just didn't jerk off for 12 weeks. Correct. That's crazy. Yeah. No nut. Okay. Whatever month that it was. Just no way. Yeah. No nut, no nut autumn. Um, Billy, as pro, <laughs> that was like a <laughs> as bro football doc. Scratch. <laughs> On today's part of my take, we finish off Super Wild Card Weekend. Rams kick the shit out of the Cardinals. Uh, we have some hot seat, cool throne. We have Braxton Berrios, All Pro. Braxton Berrios in studio. Super Bowl champion. Braxton Super Bowl Berrios. champion. Braxton Berrios. It's always fun to have someone come in in studio. So it's great to catch up with him. Great interview. Uh, very cool guy. And then we finish with FAQs. That was the question. That was yep. the first. We're FAQ. finishing off with with FAQs. FAQs. There are a lot of hot questions coming through today. FAQs. All right. Before we get to all of that, bird dogs. Listen. We talked to you about bird dog shorts. Well, guess what? They have joggers and pants as well. It is the season for some joggers to be comfortable, to get some sweatpants, to be comfortable. They also have all types of pants. Bird dogs are the most comfortable uh, bottom wear out there. They also have built-in underwear for some of their uh, items for, for shorts when we get to summer season. But Bird Dogs is the absolute best. I love wearing a nice pair of comfortable joggers on the weekend. Go to BirdDogs.com. Use promo code PMT. Go to BirdDogs.com. Enter promo code PMT. And they'll throw in a free Bird Dogs whistle football. You remember them back in the day. The best football to throw. They have them, and they're going to put them in the box. So you not only get your most comfortable pants or shorts in the world, but you get a whistle football for free. Can I brag on Hank real quick? Yeah. So I had one of those at the beach, at the beach house. Hank came down. We played with that whistle football on the sand by the ocean. Hank threw the the ball 73 yards in the air. My boy's got a cannon. Absolute rocket. That's a fact. Best in the podcast. Yes, Mm -hmm. that's a fact. So... If you remember those Nerf Vortex Howler footballs and they whistle when you throw them, it's that the best for tailgates or for being Hank, who has the best arm in the podcast, throwing bombs, deep bombs. That's BirdDogs.com, promo code PMT, boom, free Bird Dogs football with your pair of Bird Dogs. You will not take these things off and you'll not stop throwing the football. So I promise you that. BirdDogs.com, promo code PMT. Okay, let's go. Welcome to Part of My Take, presented by Bird Dogs. Go to birddogs.com right now. Enter code PMT, and you get a free whistle football with your Bird Dogs purchase. Today is Wednesday, January 19th, and the Arizona Cardinals are frauds. Absolute frauds. They made me so mad watching that game. Terrible. I, I was offended watching the Cardinals last night. I think everybody who's a sports fan has a right to be pissed off at the Cardinals. I'm... I, I was so mad at myself because it, everyone does this when watching sports or gambling on sports. You have an opinion, you have a strong opinion, and then at the very last second, you go against your strong opinion for no real good reason. I've been, w- this podcast has been forefront in the Arizona Cardinals are frauds for the better half of two months now. Mm-hmm. Cliff Kingsbury fades down the stretch. Kyler Murray, you want to say he's injured, whatever. I don't care. They just don't, they're just not a like, upper echelon football team and then right before i was like "Ooh, these teams know each other three and a half points the road team won both games this year this one's going to be tight and it was instant you knew instantly that the cardinals were going to get their asses kicked and then we had the beautiful kyler murray carson wentz play where uh i don't know what the fuck he was thinking he was about he- to take a safety what well, the thing is like it was bad that he threw it away, that he threw that interception. That's really bad. The worst part of that play is that he spent about four and a half seconds in the end zone, just hanging out, yes, hoping that nothing bad was going to happen to him. Then he feels the heat on his back. And by the way, Kyler Murray's gotten slower. He was getting chased down by linebackers. So he might game. be injured. He might be injured. But he was getting chased down from behind by guys that were about 150 pounds heavier than him 
on a regular bait, maybe not a hundred, but like a hundred pounds heavier. He's also gotten softer. He blocked me on Twitter. He, I, I also saw that he blocked Greg McElroy on Twitter. So I think he just left the game and started blocking people. I didn't at him. And he's gotten slower too. Yes. He's gotten slower, softer, and shorter. Yes. All the bad things. It yeah. Probably doesn't. That that's. I'll, I'll just say it. it. It's if it were uh, someone that I would want to have on the show, I would have not tweeted that they blocked me. Mm-hmm. Um. I've seen Kyler Murray, that Dan Patrick interview. I, I, I'm i okay with him not coming on the show. Didn't we have Kyler Murray lined up for an interview at a Super Bowl? And it was right after he did the Dan Patrick interview? Yeah. And then I think his agent was like, you know what? Kyler's We're tired not ready. right now. We're not ready. I, I, so I just pulled up his profile. He does not block me. But um, Jake was saying that we should compile an all-blocked list. Yes. Like the best players at each, at each position for part of my take overall. So, so far we have Kyler Murray. As QB1, now mm-hmm. that Big Ben doesn't block us anymore. Correct. Antonio Brown at wide receiver. Mm-hmm. OJ at running back. Mm-hmm. Who else? Who else? Any notable blocks out there? We probably should have done some research before we did this. That was stupid. Not one that comes off the top. Sorry. <laughs> no, no. It's like, sorry. I'm sorry for being stupid. No, no. It's not. Again. I'm not blaming you. It's just we just we have three that we know of. That's a good start, though. <laughs> That's... All block list. That's a good start. I wouldn't even know how to figure out. You know, who, we, it was. I got tagged in a tweet, and I looked at his profile this morning. I was like, "Wait, he blocks me." And then the Greg McElroy thing makes me think that he literally got home last night. I also, I'm going to give Kyler an out. I'm going to give him a very easy out. It feels like maybe his dad runs his Twitter account for him, and was maybe just watching the game and watching everyone just shit on him. And I, again, I didn't at him. It wasn't like targeted harassment. I just simply asked the question, is he okay? Does he have eyeballs? Because there was moments in the game last night where it felt like he just, I don't know what was going on. He looked drunk. It was bad. The entire offense looked out of sync. Even on the plays where Kyler Murray was escaping from pressure and finding a guy like seven, eight yards running open downfield, if he was able to hit him in stride, the receiver was just dropping it. And it there was, was like it, it reminded me so much of those teams that you see where like the only explanation for why things go bad is that somebody had sex with somebody else's girlfriend mm-hmm. or wife. Yeah, like, remember was it the ninety eight U S World Cup team? Yes. And then ever since that happened, that rumor gets brought up every time a team starts to suck. There's a, maybe Cliff was sleeping with somebody because like the entire team looked like they just didn't want to be. The only person who looked like they wanted to be there was probably well, it was a kicker. Yeah, huffing those smelling Matt salts. Prater, Matt kicking Prater, that, legend. kicking that extra, that uh, fifty-five yarder. Uh, that was a very sad field goal. I it was so bad that I actually said to myself, "The Cardinals are so bad tonight. Not even Matt Stafford can fuck this up." You know what I mean? Because if you're a Rams fan, what are you doing when you're going into the playoffs? You're like, we have everything. We have all the skill positions. Cam Akers is back. Aaron Donald is going to wreck games. It essentially just comes down to. Will Matt Stafford blow it in a big moment? If he doesn't, you could win the Super Bowl. If he does, you're screwed. And it got so like I'm not even saying when it was whatever whatever it was, the score was uh what, twenty one was it twenty eight nothing? Yeah. I'm not even saying then. I'm saying when it was fourteen nothing. I was like, the Cardinals are so bad that Matt Stafford cannot screw this up. He's going to get his first playoff win. And I don't know what I don't know what you do if you're a Cardinals like going forward. I you can't it's very hard to like make you, a big change because you made the playoffs. There was a point in time in this season that you were the best team in the football. But, man, if the, there's a lot of questions with Cliff Kingsbury. I actually threw this out there today, PFT. I want to hear what you have to say. I would be more confident if I were a Cardinals or a Cowboys fan if our if our defensive coordinator was the head coach and not the head coach. Okay, so, so I was actually just about to say when you were like, how do you fix this team? I think that this is the type of team – that you do the thing where you hire a Vic Fangio. Yeah. Where you go with a defensive coordinator. Fangio's has been great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You hire a defensive guy, you zig while everybody else zags. You can't, like, rebuild by hiring a great defensive mind. That just doesn't work. I just don't because understand. Because you need a quarterback to t- take you to the next level. Your offense is awesome once you have Hopkins still out there. Yeah. And everybody's healthy. But it your just... offense is going to be Your offense is going to be fine, I think, as long as you have an average offensive coordinator. If you have, like, a defensive mastermind – leading that team. I think that's the way that you got to go. You hire somebody that maybe you hire Dan Quinn. Yeah, I just it, – it feels like every time the Cardinals, they, they are very reminiscent of uh, like watching a triple option offense in that you know within the first five minutes, is this going to work or is it not? 
And, like, the Cardinals, you know, like, is their offense going to work tonight or is it not? And then they just don't change it. You know, like, they, it, it felt like they couldn't block anyone, and then they just kept on having Kyler drop back and throw it deep. And it was like, what's every time you do this, it, it ends up in disaster. Yeah, I'm going to be the body language police on, on Kyler Murray. Don't like the body language. Well, did you see the no, bad body? He looks he looks like he's uh, on sedatives when he goes on the sidelines. He's not talking to anybody. There he's not a- screaming at anybody. They always say, like, you want a guy that will grab somebody by the face mask. I think that's a little bit aggressive. I don't think you have to grab a guy by his face mask all the time. But Kyler's just like... He's a loner on the sidelines, which is fine if you're a punter or a kicker or you know a nerd that nobody's supposed to care about. So but- Jeremy Fowler on ESPN said that he actually said uh, before the game, he said, talk to a veteran Seahawks player who said he didn't like Arizona this week because the Cardinals had bad body language in the Seattle game. There we go. Cardinals ba- loaded up on veteran leaders to instill toughness, but it's not enough. There we go. I, I, I actually think that there is something to the body language experts out there yeah. that are able to read that. Like you can you can have certain players. I think the list of players that it's okay for them to have bad body language or to not talk to people on the sidelines. It would be a kicker, a punter, or like a psycho linebacker yes. that yes. nobody talks to because they're afraid they're going to get murdered. Like don't talk to the, the, the Gama to Sue. Yeah, don't talk to James Harrison yeah. on the sidelines because right. he'll rip out one of his acupuncture needles and brain you with it. Right, and the Gama to Sue will step on your on your throat or your hand and say it was an accident. Yeah, Aaron Donald will choke you. Yeah, which Aaron by Donald the way, punched a guy. Aaron Donald punched and choked. Yes, he uh, he's in playoff mode. He's in beast mode. He, he it feels like Gremlin every playoffs. Mode. He just he's like I'm just gonna start punching people. Yeah, fucking I, them up. I I do think that we should acknowledge Matt Stafford though for not fucking it up. Yeah, no, he, 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 he does he deserve credit. credit for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He could have fucked it up, but it, they made it very tough on him to do that. They also the monkey we, is off the back of Matt Stafford right now, and they won a game where Cooper Cup wasn't like. Exceptional, you know yeah. what I mean. Cooper Cup didn't have an insane night like he's had this season. Um, and Odell a- Higby and Cam Akers. I Cam Akers coming back in five months from from an Achilles is crazy. Have we figured that out? Was it a partially torn Achilles? Because five months, it was like 175 days since he tore it. It's that's way more impressive than JJ Watt coming back in 12 weeks with a, and he with wasn't a torn fully labor. Healthy, yeah. No, I mean, it was very not. obvious that he wasn't fully now, healthy. Now that we're a bonk free zone on this podcast, I I can admit let your freak flag f- fly. Yeah, let it let it all hang out. Um, I had like the same injury that JJ Watt had back in 2011. I got surgery on it and everything. Twelve weeks after I had the surgery, I couldn't even jack off. Mm. And he's out there in an NFL game, like mm-hmm. runner. There's no way that he was 100. percent Granted, I think he can has you better just switch hands. I think he what go with a stranger. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's not the same. I mean, you definitely did. It's not. No. You just didn't jerk off for 12 weeks. Correct. That's crazy. Yeah. No nut. Okay. Whatever month it was. There's just no way. Yeah. No nut, no nut autumn. Uh, Billy, as pro. <laughs> that was like a. <laughs> as bro football <laughs> <record> doc. scratch. <laughs> as bro football doc, what's, your, what's the status of Cam Akers' Achilles? How was he able to come back so quick? Dude, I don't know what these guys are doing nowadays, but modern science has it down to a T. Well, HGH. I, I, I don't think it was anything special. I, just, I don't think he was healthy. Like, I don't think he was. No, I meant Cam Akers. Oh, Cam Akers. Because he Akers. looked really yeah, healthy. J.J. Watt was not. I, so you think Cam Akers did HGH? I think they're all doing HGH. Got it. Okay. But yeah. it, was, it was really impressive watching him be able to. He had that burst. Yeah, he was, no. He, he looked like did. a very He's, good. He said he felt, like, great again. Yeah, playoff Cam. It's crazy. Um, And now we're set. That was not the best uh, super wild card weekend, I think we can all say. There was one close game that was a ref show, four blowouts, and one close game that was close because both teams just didn't want to win. Yeah, we didn't really have a memorable. Oh my god, that game was awesome! Like I'm glued to my TV type of game. I have a question for all the AWLs out there because I haven't gotten a satisfactory answer on this yet. But I noticed Cam Makers had the same almost towel hanging out from his backside that Kyle Juszczyk had for the Forty mm. ers it's like a skinny towel yeah. that, that it looks like he cut up himself. It doesn't really serve any purpose. It's not a strap for his uniform, for his pads or anything like that. It just hangs out the back. And we were talking about Juchex on uh, on the stream on Sunday. It's almost like a decoy for somebody yeah, to no, reach I, out there I think it is. and try to tackle. Like, you, like you it's grab a, it. It's yeah. a lizard flag. tail it's a flag. that comes off and yeah. you're able to run away with it. Speaking of which, I, I can't get enough of the stretchy shirts. I, it's so cool when that happens. When a guy's just when you try to when, when they try to tackle a guy and he's 10, 10 feet away from his shirt. Yeah, the shirt like unravels as <laughs> yeah, he's running away. Yeah. 
it's it is just cool. yeah that probably there's probably some type of shirt technology they're using as well yeah anti-tackle uh, shirt technology shout out also to obj's dad great job great father yeah getting him in a, in a position that that he can succeed like i actually thought halfway through the season why is odell asking to be freed we all did yeah because we saw him play in cleveland and it wasn't that he was playing well, and Baker wasn't finding him. It was that he was just unable to catch the ball Yeah, at times in, in Cleveland. And then he gets to L.A., and all of a sudden he's really, really good again. I did see there were some people who were like, this just proves that it's all about fit in the NFL and like right place, right time, right teammates, scheme, everything. That is true to an extent. Odell also has, at times, not helped himself. True. and In terms of like teammate and, you know, whatever. So it's... It, both things can be true at the same time. Odell was in the wrong fit, wrong scheme, wrong everything, but he also wasn't exactly like an A-plus model teammate at times. Right. Um, with Cliff Kingsbury, with the, with the shine coming off the star of Cliff, as we've seen the last two winners in a row, do you think Ryan Rosillo has to like eat his column? He's probably down bad. He's probably down bad. He probably stayed over at he's Ryan's gonna, house he's last gonna, night after the game. He'll probably keep – He'll. You got to stay strong, I think. But between this and Chris Paul, yeah, who's a total choke artist, they should just both live with Ryan. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's you know just keep. I think you just got to stick with it. You got to stick with it through thick and thin, and hope that you come out the other side unscathed. There's uh, there's blame a- Kyler. That's what I would do if I were still give any advice. Blame Kyler. Get blocked by Kyler, and then be like free Cliff. Kyler, you can't win with Kyler. Can you do that with a coach? Free Cl- get him to a different situation. Yes. That's actually kind of how. Cliff Kingsbury's entire career is gone, where he gets a job somewhere, performs mediocrely at it, and then fails upward into a much better job. Correct. So where does where do we need to get Cliff in a perfect position? I think he needs to go. I he you know what he needs to do? Rodgers to Denver, Cliff to Denver. He needs to like follow, he needs to coach yeah. Aaron Rodgers, where he doesn't really have to coach. Yeah, that would be a good fit for him. No I offense, think. Matt Lafleur would like him. I think that would be a good fit for Cliff if he were to like just inherit. Aaron the best Rogers. quarterback in the NFL. Yes. yes. Um, all right. So divisional round set. Awesome game set. We will do a preview on Friday of all of those games. Uh, before we get to hot seat, cool throne. I did want to make a quick announcement. Um, I'm sorry uh, to everyone here um, that people think a white guy can't enjoy Black History. Well, yeah, that was going to be on my my hot seat. But I mean, Darren Ravel. Maybe the greatest uh, cell phone 24 hours of all time. You no, know, he's the least racist white person in history. Well, he literally has a card. It's no, signed by no, Rosa Parks. Yeah, it's like him and Thomas Jefferson. Yeah. When you think of white guys that are racist but not really racist. So it's it, Darren Ravel. He has an autographed NAACP yeah, Rosa Parks card. Which is not autographed. It's literally you sign. It's like it's like saying your driver's license is autographed. Yeah, no, it's That's a, not an autograph. It's autographed. Yeah. He got it signed by her. So, so for people who don't live online, uh, this actually is a time that it's worth bringing him up because it's very, very funny. He has uh, over nine... Pieces of MLK memorabilia, which actually just means he has ten. Yeah, and over nine uh, was over the nine. funniest. Way over to nine, play. and he showed it off on Martin Luther King Jr. Day, and everyone's like, "Dude, this kind of weird," because one of the pieces was a uh, log from when Martin Luther King Jr. was in jail, and he had to sign the log Autograph. to receive his to receive his mail. Uh, and he's like, "Look how cool this is!" And everyone's like, "That's kind of weird, dude." When he was like. Uh, wrongfully imprisoned, and now and they're telling him to donate it, and they're telling well, him to donate. He, it, and he then he should, said he should donate it, and then he went even further, and he was like, uh, "Well, I bought it from the from the warden of the jail, which is like that's even more exploitative." Uh, and then he tweeted and deleted that you can't call him racist because he owns an extensive Martin Luther. Some of his best memorabilia is black, and mm-hmm. also he has black friends. He has several black friends. Yes, he has. Upward, over, capitalized black. black. Yes, yes, he has over <laughs> over nine black friends, according to to Darren Ravel. It was it was so funny because then he hopped into the University of Miami Twitter Spaces and defended. We his, should play it. His, Let's play his it. MLK collection. Let's put it in. Let's put it in right now. Explain it to to the fan base so we everybody can get on the same page. Sure, I have I have uh, over nine MLK signed items. I am a humongous fan of what he's done. Uh, and over the last seven years, I've collected a lot of things. Uh, it's not only MLK. It's a lot of black history. I own a Rosa Parks uh, signed NAACP card. 
So it was pretty shocking today how I was called racist um, when when I, I am a student and lover of black history. And it was it was I never expected the reaction that I that I got today. Hmm. I'm so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if people think that a white man can't enjoy black history. All right. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I, I, I really am. It, I'm sorry if people think that a white man uh, can't uh, uh, love Martin Luther King. But to me, that seems pretty counterintuitive. You got me? Yeah, they, they got you. So, yeah. And then at the end, when he signs off, he goes, you got that? Yeah. And they're like, yeah, okay, Darren, we, we got that. He, he, he talks about his MLK merchandise like it's shoes. Like yeah. he has, it's actually him being like, I got the largest collection of off-whites this side of the Mississippi. Yeah. And then he's like, I bet you, I bet you Darren Ravel has considered at least NFTing the I have a dream speech. Of course. He, he, you know what he'll do? He'll NFT the, uh, the black square that people put on their Instagram uh, when everybody did the media blackout mm-hmm. last year, Darren Ravel will NFT that black square and then claim that he is he's the their true leader of the modern civil rights movement. I just want to know how like he's showing this. He feels comfortable showing this. He's definitely got some fucked up stuff. Yes, he's like. Have you seen American Beauty? Yeah, he's got some collections. He's like got that. like Muhammad Atta's cell phone behind the and scenes. He's like, well, it's just he's an interesting person. Yeah, on this day in history, American Airlines stock dropped twenty yeah. percent. Um, Fuck man, he's he's just it's so weird because you know and I, this is gonna this is gonna sound stupid because uh, I'm basically admitting that I follow Darren Ravel on not one but two platforms, but I do follow him on Instagram. I remember last week he was like showing off one of his MLK pieces of MLK memorabilia, and I remember thinking, oh he's he's gonna tweet about this on Monday and it's not gonna go well. And then that exact same thing happened. So it's like it's 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 almost a cell phone for myself where I'm like I I follow him on two platforms that I know when he's about to slip up, but him slipping up here was the most obvious thing of all time. I just I don't follow him at all on anything because my 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 life as it revolves around Darren Ravel is basically like Well, you won't fight him. Other people will tell me when Darren Ravel right. is fucking up. And by the way, the whole I won't I will fight him. You guys Talked me out of fighting him. I heard you wouldn't. No, I won't. You, you personally told oh, me don't I, fight him. I heard you wouldn't. I said I thought you said I. You, I don't want to fight him because he probably could kick my you ass. You literally said I don't want you to fight him because that's what Darren wants. I will. Well, yes, fi- that's true. I will fight Darren Ravel. I required no money to do it. If I beat him, Darren has to donate his entire MLK collection. Won't happen. All ten pieces of won't it happen. and his autographed. Rosa Parks NAACP rookie card. He actually he has to donate it to the Smithsonian. <laughs> I want no money. I just want to beat him and make American history a little bit better. He he actually has a card that if someone's like, "Hey, dude, you're racist," he's like, "Nope." Rosa Parks NAACP card <laughs> mm-hmm. right here. Mint condition. <laughs> like I have it. It's an I'm not racist card. Yeah. Oh, just I. This is gonna sound crazy, and I'm sure I'll change my opinion in a week, but. I actually ju- like watching this all unfold. I think his, I think he actually is a net positive on society just because of how terribly out of touch and insanely hilarious his unintentional comedy is. He's like he's actually reached a level where I enjoy him getting dunked on. He's he's Sean Bradley, who's I think he got hit by a car, right? Yeah. So that's probably a bad reference to use. He's Bryant Reeves. There we go. Yep. Or yeah. uh, Rick Smith. Yeah, he's Rick Smith. He, he gets dunked on for sport at this time. Yeah. At this point. Uh, so I think it's just remarkable that Darren has been able to be consistent in this for his entire career. Like, he has not evolved. He has no. not changed a bit. Considering the amount of negative feedback that he's gotten whenever he fucks up, he just hasn't changed. He has not taken anything. Into, he has not learned any lessons online and I think that's actually an admirable thing. He his brain can't compute. Like he can't I watched as people were trying to break it down for him, being like, you own a piece of history that shows like when Martin Luther King was in jail, it's not his autograph. He literally had to sign just to get correspondence. This should be in a museum. You own it and you owned it to turn a profit one day because that's what he does with all of his memorabilia. He's gonna sell it. It's fucked yeah. up and he's like 
no, I lo- I just love black history. I'm sorry that a white man can love Martin Luther King Jr. <laughs> and he was like, I, I just love everything that he's done. <laughs> well, oh, yeah, name three of his speeches. <laughs> um, but he did give us Jake, which is nice. That's what I was yeah, going to say. I would true. not have a job here without him. Yeah, so yeah. he's a so net positive great. on society. He, I, I don't think he should, like, you know, there's no cancel Darren Ravello. He's, no. I want him to just keep doing. I want him to keep living exactly how he thinks he should be living because – He's he's sideshow Bob stepping on a rake. Like should, every month he will do something. Yeah, you something. guys brought me in to troll him, and yeah. Yeah. here we are, almost three years later. So we, we need to get we, you we like should, a Thurgood Marshall. No, we should get Jake. We should get something. Jake to like collect. I don't know. Um, maybe maybe Jewish history. Yeah, pieces of Jewish history that you can show off to him. Work on it. He, but yeah, no, we we need to get you to some collect something rare. That's like what? Okay. What is this guy doing? I'll think of something unique. Very weird guy. I'm just glad that he didn't go JFK. He's definitely this. got some fucking bloodied, like, lapel. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. This is not... He felt comfortable showing this. I, You know he's got some fucked up stuff. Very. He has to. Well, actually, I think I think Ravel might be so out of touch and clueless that he shows everything. It might be one of those what you see is what you get with Darren. Yeah. It's just shitty. Like, it, it, what you see is what you get, and it just happens to be what you get with Darren is just a clueless, out of touch weirdo. He has. A, he bought. He recently bought a Hugh Hefner Viagra bottle. I saw, no uh, prescription, right? Yeah. Oh, no, it no, Viagra. yeah. It was the yeah, pill. It was Viagra. It was yeah, the, the pill bottle. Yeah, for it. yeah. So, what a weird, weird guy. But I actually have come out in the other end where I'm like, I'm, I'm happy he exists because he provides unintentional comedy that you can't. Like, no one else does what he does to that level. Like, last night was so funny watching him try to defend everyone. He His his defense was literally some of my best memorabilia is black. Mm-hmm. And he, he, he that's what he was yelling about. I would, it's, it's black memorabilia that he's also holding hostage yeah. <laughs> from American museums. <laughs> Are we sure that was actually him in the Twitter space yes. last night? So, yes. Yeah, so yes. Billy, you think for an instant that if, if he had been going viral for his defense of his black memorabilia, you think that if, the, if that was a fake, Darren would have just sat back and not said anything. That's he, when go, he, getting too woke is bad. Yeah, he would have. You're like, that's not really Darren. Ravel. He would have instantly been like, "That's not me. I actually own over 20 pieces of MLK memorabilia." Because mm-hmm. it was so bad, I didn't believe it. No, it was one of those things where I had to walk it back. That's what I'm saying. His unintentional comedy is off the charts. It's it's incredible at this point. I just I hope he never stops. Yeah, because <laughs> he still doesn't know that he did anything wrong at all. He's like the. The internet's being mean to me again. They wait till I sell this, this, uh, this bullet casing from Martin Luther King's assassination for seven billion dollars, and I'll be having the last laugh. I have an autographed uh, letter from the director of the FBI telling MLK to kill himself. Yeah, yeah. How can I be racist? Yes, yes. This will someday pay for my kid's college. Um, all right, let's get to hot seat, cool throne. Uh, hot seat, cool throne. Brought to you by Coors Light. Our favorite Coors Light. There's only one beer out there that's literally made to chill, and that's Coors Light. The mountains on the bottles and cans even turn blue when your beer is cold. That way you always know when it's time to chill, when you need to hit reset. Just open a Coors Light. It's mountain cold refreshment. Made to chill. Coors Light is cold lagered, cold filtered, and cold packaged. It's literally made to chill. So if you're sitting on the couch, maybe watching Divisional Round this weekend, crack open that ice cold Coors Light. It is delicious. Coors Light is the one I choose when I need to unwind. So when you want to hit reset... Reach for the beer that's made to chill. Get Coors Light in the new look delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash take. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. CoorsLight.com slash take. Henry. Daniel. Hot seat, cool throne. My hot seat is Philadelphia Eagles fans. Oh. Oh. Tough, tough weekend for if you're an Eagles fan. You guys got absolutely shit pumped uh, in the playoffs. You're out. Tom Brady's your daddy. And then... (laughs) A video surfaced of you're addicted to developing enemies. Like you can't, you can't go this isn't longer a developing than developing enemy. <laughs> yeah, but you, no, but you're is pre-existing. But you're like you're poking an open wound. No, I have no choice. I have to just go with what happens in the world and, and comment on it on this <laughs> podcast. It just so happened that this Eagles fan uh, was in. I believe it, it must have been Las Vegas. Yes, there was a Michael Jackson impersonator, and yes. the Eagles fan, as an Eagles fan does, picked a fight with him, started throwing punches at him out of nowhere. <laughs> as an Eagles fan, and does. then the Michael Jackson impersonator just absolutely beat the shit out of him, like he rear know, na- he, to the ground, yeah, he rear naked, naked choked, choked him. Hold him. Uh, which is just a funny visual because it's like Michael Jackson impersonator. Oh, boom! This guy should be in the UFC. He? Do you think? People should respect the tap, even in the wild, right? Yes. yes like yes. the whole time I was watching that video. 
I was like, dude, tap. Just bro, tap. Tap out. Tap I, out. I think a guy like that who obviously had MMA training would have respected the tap in that yes. situation. Because the guy took him down with the old like step around the back and then yes. and then throw him, use your body as a lever. And then he positioned himself correctly. So in his mind, Michael Jackson was in an he was in a UFC fight. Yes. That's as close as he'll ever get to the octagon. So yeah, if you tap, I think he stands up, he goes back to his corner, moves on. You know? Also shout out that fan because his shirt was incredible. It had two Eagles fans at a urinal pissing and then a Cowboys fan shitting in the urinal and said, can't fix stupid. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. That's, that's a good just, burn. That's just an old school, awesome rivalry burn. Yep. Uh, and then my cool throne, these jumpsuits, first of all, we're all wearing them. Uh, me, PFT, Billy, Jake, wearing the jumpsuits. We uh, did a little photo shoot, posted some pictures. A lot of people were asking where we can get them. You can get them on the Barstool Sports store. Uh, and then my other cool throne is just humanity. Mm. Humanity. Well, not actually. Except for Eagles fans. Except for Eagles fans. And, Bills and fans. Elon Musk thinks that uh, there's going to have a population collapse and the world's going to end soon. Oh, sick. All right. Yeah. Don't, I mean, don't we need to kind of thin out the herd a little bit? Damn. A lot of stupid people sick. out there running around that you can't fix. Yeah, especially mm. in Philadelphia. Mm. <laughs> mm. Yeah. That's We're, it. Yeah. I didn't mean to go so hard on for, Billy? Eagles fans, but. Now we're just going to make robots. What? Robots. Robots are going to replace people? Yeah. Wouldn't yeah. there be a robot problem? No. I'd be fine with... Darren Ravel would never get in trouble again on Twitter. Well, yeah. I mean, Darren Ravel is a robot. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He would, he would, he would literally... like people be, be like, king. good point, Darren. So, um, Hank, can you power rank your current rivalries you have going on right now between fan bases? Which ones, which ones are the meanest to you? Eagles fans, for sure. Yeah. Are they the same as Sixers fans? Yeah. Yeah. Philadelphia as a as a whole. As a whole, yeah. Bills fans are, are, are have been very mean. I think it's more fair though. There is much more of a rivalry there. You know, the Eagles the Eagles fans I don't understand. Like, we beat the Eagles in the Super Bowl, they beat us in the Super Bowl. One to one. Eagles fans act like they just have complete domination and and, and despite the fact that's the only Super Bowl they've won in like a thousand years. Mm. Which just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. Bills okay. fans, there are some Bills fans that are like, hey, you know, not all Bills fans are mean. We like you, blah blah blah. Oh, they're coming in peace. Bills fan coming yeah, in peace. Yeah, no, there's not been a single Philadelphia person that's coming. The slightest yeah, I bit love of peace. that. Of course not. I don't want them to. Yeah. Fuck that. Be who you are. All right, PFT, your hot seat, cool throne. Uh, my hot seat is cake. Yep. Mine cake, too. I put cake on the hot seat because well, Andy Reid really put cake on the hot seat. They asked uh, they asked Andy if the Chiefs have the same championship hunger, and his answer was, if you have a piece of chocolate cake chocolate cake and you see another dangling in front of you you're going to want it that's how you feel about the super bowl it is the ultimate chocolate cake yep and uh, i love it andy reed he just thinks of everything in his life as it as it's related to food it's the nfl i had the entire nfl on on the hot seat for that same reason that like once andy figures out the perfect analogy for wanting to win another super bowl you're screwed. Yeah, he said earlier this month, I love how this team works together like I love a big piece of prime rib. Right. So everything for him is like, it's a, everything is a food. So like a touchdown, I'd say like a touchdown is a sandwich, like a hero sandwich yes. to him. But he he gets very very into his food metaphors. And once he starts thinking about food, he, he physically gets hungry. And then he's going to mentally get hungry. And then the entire NFL, next thing you know, is in trouble. Yes. Yes. I, lo I mean... Andy, he's the best. He's the best. My cool throne is Stephen A. Smith um, because he came in hot to celebrate the Cowboys' epic collapse on Sunday. He put on the Cowboy hat. He did everything. He danced around. He was laughing at all the fans who were in misery. And the entire time I'm watching Stephen A. Smith, I think just one thing. He, he really, truly has an audience of one for all this celebration. Yes. And that's Skip Bayless. Yes. He is sending he – is, he's not subtweeting Skip Bayless – he is subliving everything at Skip Bayless. His entire life is a subtweet to Skip Bayless because he misses him so much, mm -hmm. and they they miss their debates together. You can try to convince yourself in line and be like, "No, Skip really likes debating against Dan Orlovsky. No, Skip really likes debating against Max Kellerman. Nothing is going to replace the void that Skip Bayless left in his life." And I hope to God that I live to see the day where they reunite on TV again because there's an entire generation right now, kids. That's coming through high school, coming through college, that never got to live through a Stephen A. Smith and Skip Bayless debate show, and you have no idea how great it was. Yeah, no, you're right. It was uh, he put on he put on an A plus performance off of COVID too. 
Yeah, it was I, his first time back. He was hospitalized. He almost died. Yes. Stephen yes. A. Smith said, "I would dramatic till the very end. I would have died if it wasn't for." He said because of the vaccine, right? Vax Kellerman. <laughs> <laughs> he, yeah, he was. He was literally saying he was on death's door. Um, and thank God that we didn't lose. And the him. Cowboys losing brought him back to life. That's probably he. He, yeah. he probably willed himself back to health because he's like, I'm not going to die I to be before here. I see Mike McCarthy yes. run a draw <laughs> with 14 <laughs> seconds left in the game. I need to be around for that. But uh, I just, the moral of the story is, um, I just really hope that that Skip and Stephen A. get back together. Did you see there was a lot of people who got fooled by the uh, analytics tweet that Mike McCarthy, like it was a fake quote that Mike McCarthy, that was what the analytics called for, the draw play there? No. So I got duped by that. Yeah, so so people were shaming others for getting duped by that. I think it's the opposite. It's that Mike McCarthy is so bad that that becomes believable. That's a shame on Mike McCarthy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's so... The fact that there was a, multiple people who thought that was real, that's not your fault. Uh, that is Mike McCarthy's fault. That, that's a dangerous route because we catch a lot of strays with that, too. What do you mean? When, like, a, if a story comes out about Barstool Sports that's just, like, completely made up about something. Yeah, but this is a harmless one, and then not, every, like, a real one. Yeah. Like, this that, is a harmless, funny story. It's I, not like, you know. I, I think that... Um, the the real story is just as funny as Mike McCarthy saying that the analytics told us to go for that, which is him saying like, "Yeah, we run this fourteen second yes. quarterback draw yes. constantly in yes. practice." Yes. And in reality, every other coach, every other player that's asked about it says, "Yeah, that play takes about seventeen seconds." Yeah, Jesus Christ, so funny! What a clusterfuck! All right, my hot seat was also cake, and then my cool throne is LeBron. LeBron, the coach killer, is back. It looks like Frank Vogel might get fired. There's a lot of rumors right now. No one does it better than him. No one kills a coach better than LeBron. Uh, it actually makes me think, like, Eric Spolster should be in the Hall of Fame right now for not having LeBron, you know, get him fired so instantly. Who, who does he want? I don't know. Probably one of, his, like, one of his friends, someone he can boss around. The thing is, I don't think LeBron ever thinks a step ahead before he gets a coach fired. I no. don't think he's got – he doesn't have a succession plan. Yeah. they're they're uh, Apparently, they're, like, going game by game. To decide whether he's going to keep his job. Which, on a, so it says, Vogel who coached the Lakers to a championship in 2020 and whose contract runs through 2022-23 campaign is being evaluated on a game-to-game -game basis and remains at risk of being fired soon if the progress doesn't continue. Which which one of his sons is the one that the uh, nerd was based off in Space Jam 2? Uh, Bryce Maximus. Yeah, Bryce. Bryce probably plays a lot of 2K, right? Mm -hmm. That'd be very funny if he had his son coach the team. He could do it. Yeah. I mean, why not? He's no one kills a coach better than LeBron. This is going to be so. F they're they're essentially saying that like after every game, Bron Bron's going to come off the court and just be like, "All right, he keeps his job one more game." Just give him the luck, like yeah, he's just doing the fucking gladiator up and down after every game for Frank Vogel's life. Can he? Uh, can you trade a coach? Uh you can. I don't know. Who would want Frank Vogel? Yeah, I don't know. Well, I don't know if you could trade a coach after you uh, announce or have reports that he's on a game-to-game -game basis. That's such a tough spot to be in if you're if you're going to go coach LeBron because you know that you'll have some success. Right. But you also know that you'll be very publicly humiliated. It's mm -hmm. also tough if you're game-to-game -game and, like, Russell Westbrook's one of your worst players, but you have to play him. Yeah. But if but you're trying to keep your sick. job. That dunk was, was sick. a sick that dunk. Was a sick mm -hmm. dunk. Shout out, Russ. That was a sick dunk. Um, all right, Billy, your hot seat, cool throne. My hot seat <clears throat> is U.S. air shipping and travel. Turns out a bunch of the <clears throat> airline CEOs said that uh, the new 5G radars that are getting put on for telecommunications, once they get turned on, it's going to affect a bunch of their planes landing systems and that they're going to have to ground all U.S. air and travel tomorrow. Where, tomorrow? Yeah, today. It actually today. is going to happen? Yeah, I mean, it's been. Ha it's they wrote a letter to be like, really? Yeah, they Damn. open. They open lettered five G. Exactly. Damn. So it's supposed to. By the way, five G's already happened in Asia and Europe already. This might. How is be it not happening in America? All the commercials are five G, five G, five G, five G. I don't know the precise reason why, but this might be another. You can't use your cell phone on a plane type situation. Kate McKinnon just has a more annoying version of five G. I think this is really just a move to like re up that like, oh, you can't use your cell phone anymore on planes. Yeah, I don't. Kill me. I I don't know. This this to me reminds me of the the Y two K scare. 
where it was like planes won't work. Everybody is going to be living. It's going to be the apocalypse. Right. Yeah. People are going to be running around with like with with torches trying to find their way in the dark. The the exact is that ray R A D A L T technology is affected by five G waves and gives false readings. So no planes tomorrow. So there might not be planes tomorrow, but who knows? Might not actually be true. I think they're just going to use it to tell people they can't use their cell phone on planes anymore. That's going to really fuck with coaching searches. Mm-hmm. Mm. And my cool throne is runnings, cool runnings. The Jamaican bobsled team has qualified for the 2022 oh, Olympics. Let's go. Yes. Feel the run. Yeah, there Feel is the an run. Olympics this year. Get yeah. on up. It, That's before nice. the Super Bowl. Bobsled time. Not excited at all. No, you know what's going to be funny, though? Great movie. So, like, everybody is boycotting these Olympics. It'd be very funny if... Are we? I. We should. Yeah. For political reasons? We Where should. are they? China? China. Uh, Damn. I feel like... Well, everyone but the NBA is No fans it. either. Every, oh. Everybody except for Jamaica should players. boycott these Winter Olympics so Jamaica can get a gold medal in the bobsled. I'd be, I'd be fine with that. But I'm yeah. down to boycott. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'll boycott too. All right. Uh, we're, not, we're not the Golden State Warriors. Did you Done. see what, what their owner said yesterday? No. That was fucked. It was pretty fucked up. They asked him about the Uyghurs and the concentration camps, and he was like, yeah, I'll be honest with you. I just don't care. There's a line of things that I care about, Yikes. and that is beneath the line – of things that I'm supposed to care yeah, about. Good to know where his line is. I I at least respect the fact that he's being honest about it. Yeah. Everybody but else that, in the NBA is, yeah. is just like, please stop asking me that question. Yes. But at least he's like, yeah, you know what? I make a lot of money, so I don't care about people that are getting put into camps. Yes. I mean, that's we're, we're boycotting, so we're better than him. Give us the Warriors. I'm not even, you know what? I'm not going to mention the Olympics this entire winter. I probably will mention it a couple me too, times, but I'm going to sure. boycott it. No yeah. doubt. Yeah. Uh, Hank. Or no, I mean Jake. Sorry. My hot seat is any athlete not named Marcus Mariota or Novak Djokovic. Because happy Marcus Mariota and Novak oh, yeah. Djokovic Day. Why? Wednesday. Why? Because a year ago, I listened to the clip yep. this morning. Uh, it was just to remember that they exist. <sighs> Specifically Mariota. Then we yeah, talked Djokovic about Djokovic. Is, yeah, it's kind of good timing with Djokovic. Free him. Yeah. But Marcus Mariota does exist, and I actually... No, he's probably just a backup now. I mean, he looked good whenever he played. Yeah, but it was like they were, they were kind of gadget plays. I, I graded all of his plays from this year, and he averaged out at an A- on film. I was going to say my grade was 87.6. No, I had a 91.2. So in, in well, certain, mine's out of 95. Yeah, okay, so that's a, that's an A. Yeah, okay. so we're same page. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so it's the second ever day for that. We were going back and forth on the date. We moved it back a few days because we didn't want it to interfere with Hank's sister's birthday. Got oh, it. All right. Happy birthday to Hank's sister. All right. So Shout Marcus out to Mariota. That was yesterday, but yeah, Marcus. Oh yeah, I remember. I remember this now. Yeah, <laughs> Marcus Mariota. Way to go, dude. Yeah, that you was exist. A year ago. Um, we love you. You're welcome to come on the show. Same with Djokovic. Wait, let's see if he blocks us. Um, oh, I don't think we have part. that many people blocking us. Yeah, from, in sports, it feels like yeah. you do an all block list of like Brooklyn writers or something. That would be. Did he extensive. ever? Did he ever play after that concussion? That yeah. He got? yeah, yeah. He came he back. And he, he was suited up. He got in a couple times. Yeah, he was suited up for for the playoff game. So good um, for him. Yeah, back on the show every year, uh, January nineteenth. And then my uh, cool throne is the Vermont Catamounts, making my return yes. to Burlington this weekend. Call the game on ESPN three. Everyone, please tune in. Big Cat, this gives you one team in green and yellow to cheer for on Saturday night. Oh, because the Packers are playing. Yes. Um, so Hartford. I wasn't thinking about that. Uh, I was thinking about like they better cover. Yeah. No. They better cover. Yeah, they're one and zero, right? Or yeah, my broadcasts are one and zero. Yes, but system. they are. Be they better cover because I'm going to watch this game. Okay. The whole game. I hope they do. And for I'm you. going to bet on it. Yeah. ESPN three Saturday seven o'clock. So you better know the spread, and you better better announce around it. I want to see, I want to hear, I want to hear it. You'll hear it. Okay, I want to hear it. You'll hear the reference. Like if it's like a six or seven point if it's, spread. Yeah, if it's close, you'll hear it. Yeah, but if like it's natural. It's, wait, what's your what wink going to be? You got like your your signature wink. I don't know. It's going to be a big number. They're playing Hartford, who's I'm two and ten. I'm going to tell you. Usually, mm -hmm. it's somewhere around Ken Palm. So let's look. Ken Palm has them winning by eighteen, I think. Okay, so let's say it's a it's, let's say it's an eighteen point spread, and there's two minutes left, and they're up twenty, and Hartford hits a three. What are we saying? Because hmm. I can give you. You want some advice? 
Yeah. And Hartford just came back, and now they're winning. <laughs> That's what you should say. In the eyes of some folks. <laughs> yeah. But just, like, if it's a blowout, announce it like that. Just All be right. like, I'll and Hartford takes a lead by one as they're down 17. <laughs> right. So, yeah, everyone, please tune in. Yes. I, if you don't tune in, you're a fucking scumbag. Facts. Yeah. Who and, are you working with? Uh, Bernie Saplicki, former Catamount. Love it. Okay. Yeah. How's your chemistry with him? It's great. We did some work together when I was there as a How vo- radio voice. Uh, I don't know a specific number. I believe he's a father. Mm. Um, mm. Yeah. You, do you guys do like a steak dinner before the game? No. Night before? Be nice. Get to know each other? Yeah. What yeah. if What if we gave you some money to take him out for a steak dinner? Yeah, do it. Because you always have to say like, father. I always hear like yeah. Al Michaels being like, you know, we went out for a steak last night. I just assume that it's a normal thing that yes. every announcer has steak. Fly, Fair. Fly oh, if there's shrimp, I'll tweet about it. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So there won't be. Though, probably right? not in no, Vermont in the winter. Have, yeah. Anything. It's on a lake, but yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. <laughs> Tune in. in Saturday night. All right. Let's get to it. Braxton Berrios. Great interview coming up. Before we get to Braxton, I want to talk to you about our great friends over at Helix Sleep. I actually had an experience uh, earlier this summer where changing my mattress changed my life. I was sleeping on a mattress that was way too soft. I always thought that soft equals good when it comes to mattresses. Not the case. It turns out my back was all kinds of screwed up. Sleeping on a more firm mattress helped me out immensely, changed my life. That's not an exaggeration. My life is different now that I'm on a more firm mattress. I'm able to get around. No pain when I wake up. Well, it might be the same for you. You might be sleeping on the wrong mattress right now. Helix Sleep has a quiz that takes just two minutes to complete, and it matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. Why would you buy a mattress made for someone else? With Helix, you're getting a mattress that you know will be perfect for the way that you sleep. Everybody's unique. Helix knows that. They have several mattress models to choose from. They have soft, medium, and firm. Mattress is great for cooling you down if you sleep hot. I'm a hot sleeper. Sometimes I sweat in my sleep. Fortunately, I've got a mattress that cools me off. They have mattresses that are great for spinal alignment, so you can prevent morning aches and pains, and even a Helix Plus mattress for plus-size sleepers. Just go to helixsleep.com slash PMT, take their two-minute sleep quiz, and they're going to match you to a customized mattress that's going to give you the best sleep of your life. They have a 10-year warranty. You get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. You're even going to pick it up for you if you don't love it, but you will. Helix even has financing options and flexible payment plans. A great night's sleep is never far away. Best of all, 200 bucks off. That's what you guys were waiting for. They're giving you $200 off all mattress orders, and you get two free pillows. For our listeners at helixsleep.com slash PMT. That's helixsleep.com slash PMT. 200 bucks off all mattress orders and two free pillows. Here's Braxton Berrios. Okay, we now welcome on a very, very special guest. It is, well, he's going to be a free agent. It's Braxton Berrios. He is uh, all pro Brax, Braxton Berrios. How, like, let's start there. That's got to be pretty cool. You, you made all pro as a kick returner. That's in, that's insane. Like people, all pro is something we should celebrate more because if there's one pick for each position. You're all pro. Appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I I was I was shocked. I was actually I just got back from a vacation, so I was getting my coffee. I had actually sat down looking at the ocean. You know, very nice, peaceful Friday morning, and uh, it just came up on my phone. And it was like a Twitter notification and it wasn't from like a big source. Like it wasn't from like the AP, you know, the Associated Press. It was just like a notification. So I looked at it and then I started texting people like, hey, is this real? You know, cause like, you know, you can't believe what you see on Twitter. Right. And so I, I texted, hey, is, is this real? And then all of a sudden it actually came out like from the NFL and called my mom, called my dad. Like I was, I was elated. And, and not only that, you are a free agent right now. So it's got to like, that was probably Big. the second thought. Like, Big. oh shit, now this it's, helped. Yeah, you're not signing just Braxton Berrios. You're signing all pro Braxton Berrios. Like that, that definitely yeah. no, changes it's, it's negotiations. Amazing. Yeah. It's amazing what that designation changes. Yeah. So no, it was, uh, yeah, I, I, I cried. I'm not even going to lie. I cried. Congrats, I, thought it was, man. I thought it was awesome. Man card. And it's yeah. also <laughs> like, I mean, kick returners. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> kick returner is, uh, it's a, a thankless position. It's you know a position that you've seen in the NFL kind of wane because of the kickoff rules and stuff. So you yeah, deserve you it. You can't take that take yeah. that away from the game. You yeah, can't. you just no. can't. It's 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 an exciting part of the game. And whether it's like okay, you score or you get absolutely crushed, it's still a big part of the <laughs> that, game. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, like it's got to be a, a a scary position to play. Oh yeah, I, and I but I wholeheartedly say punt return is scarier than kickoff return, but. 
you will get hit harder on kickoff return. Because yeah, they, more they, speed. They've been yeah, running. I mean, they, they've, they're running from 60 yards, yeah. you know, and, you know, one, one guy doesn't block or messes up the block or, you know, doesn't get them hardly at all. And, like, it's a full 60-yard start. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think sometimes people forget that, but when you watch even a touchback, if the kick goes straight into the end zone, you'll see that, you know, the referee signals for a touchback. Great call. Great, great arm signal. And then, you know, three seconds after that, you'll see guys still slowing up, sprinting in the end zone yeah. because they were going that fast. That like fast. when they got to the 20, they had to just – They just coasted. Yeah, and they just coasted all the way in. So oh, yeah. yeah no, gotta, it's, it's a, it's a full-on head-on collision. Yeah. And who votes for All-Pro? It's the actual, like, media. So, like, the, the actual people in the NFL. So it's not like the Pro Bowl where it's, like, fans and, like, yeah. a popularity contest. Mm -hmm. The All-Pro is, like – I think it's, like, the 50 of the top, like, media – of the NFL. It's similar to the MVP vote. I'm pretty sure it's almost yeah, the exact I, I, same. I think, yeah. it's, I think it's the same people. Because I remember I looked up, there's one year that's very, very weird, and I'd have to double check it, that like Joe Montana made the All-Pro, but John Elway won the MVP, which like never happens. Usually All-Pro tells you MVP. who's going to win the MVP. But yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a crazy, it's awesome for you. Um, so uh, w your career, like, let's just get this out of the way. The jokes that were made when you were coming out of college and being like, you're going to get drafted by Bill Belichick, when that actually happened, were you like, is this is this a prank? Because I think there's there's very few times where some, where we see a player in college and we're like, oh, that's he's definitely going to get drafted by the Patriots, and then it happened. Then it actually happened. Yes. Yeah. Yes. No, I, you know, I heard it all coming out, and when it actually happened, I was like, wow, you, know, you, you guys were right. He does have a type. Yeah. yeah. I, I look back nailed that one. at my tweets in, uh, in 2017. I said, congratulations uh -huh. to future New England Patriot <laughs> Braxton Berrios. And then Danny Woodhead got involved. I remember Danny Woodhead was yes, the guy that actually – he turned me on to you. He was like, yo, this guy's not just sneaky fast. He's fast, fast. Oh, that's the worst. Yeah. That's the worst. The whole sneaky fast, deceptively. Yeah. Like quick, but that's the that's the worst. What's the most important thing to have a receiver like you? Is it, I've always thought it's wiggle. Do you have wiggle? I have wiggle. Yeah, it's, wiggle's it's, important. Wiggle's important. And, like, of course, like, I hate saying this, but, like, quickness is important, especially because you're going across the middle. So right. So it's like – you got to be able to like, you know, you got linebackers in there and safety's coming from 10 yards. Like you, you, you need some wiggle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then what was the conversation when Belichick had to cut you? Cause you, you know, you had an injury. They had, uh, they were trying to fill up their roster spot with four or five guys for wide receiver. Yeah. Was he, did he cry when he had to cut you? He's like, I, <laughs> he, I loved you since the second I set eyes on you. <laughs> yeah. It was, uh, it was, it was a tough conversation, obviously. And, um, you know, he was obviously very, he was very complimentary and, you know, they're, they're very professional about everything they do. And and that's the problem. I mean, when you get injured over there, it's, it's, it's a little different. Um, you know, it's, it's looked upon differently than, than other places. And it's just, that's what it was. Yeah. And, you know, it, and luckily it landed me on my next spot and that kind of led me to here. So it is what it is. It wasn't a, it wasn't a fun time. Well, and you had the rare one where I, I think I read that, uh, Belichick called Adam Gase and was like, you got like, yeah, so, a really good one here. So Gase actually told me that story towards the end of that season. So we were sitting in a walkthrough on Saturday and somehow it came, something came up and, and he said, uh, by the way, I never told you the story. And he told me that story where, you know, he, Belichick called him and he thought it was about Demarius Thomas at the time because Demarius Thomas was with me in New England at the time. And then he came over to New York and he said he he had nothing. He didn't talk about Demarius at all, and he just said, "Hey, man, you you really had a good one. We wish we could have kept him." Mm -hmm. And you know, it's it's cool, obviously, hearing that from right. Bill Belichick, right? Uh, but yeah, okay. So some would say, I've heard people say that you're undersized, but you're five eight and five eighths. You're the perfectly average size person. <laughs> it doesn't get any more perfectly average size than that. I used to be five nine, but then I got COVID. Now I'm five eight. Um, does it to your spine? I it heard. does. Yeah. It compresses it. It's it's a shame. So stay safe. I hope that you're vaccinated. <laughs> um, but being a, a smaller wide receiver in the NFL, is there any advantage at all to being a little bit on the smaller side? Because there might be certain things that guys are used to playing against bigger, taller, wider. Is there anything like any small, tiny little thing that we might not think about that it might actually help to be a little bit shorter? I mean, I, I, I guess to. Uh, yeah, I mean. I can I can avoid hits a little better, you know, mm -hmm. a little a little quicker, you know, because like you know you see two or three guys coming at one time and you just you find we call it find a pocket, yeah. And like I can find a pocket a little bit, you know, hundreds quicker than a guy who's six one can. So like that's obviously a uh, a plus there. There's less of you to hit exactly. Yeah, and you're you're closer to the ground. I actually think that that, that is true. Being able to fall correctly in the in the NFL. Oh, it's a huge skill. Yeah, 
you getting gotta, tackled is a skill. Yes, you got to learn how to fall. And so, like that's why you see a lot of people with like shoulders when they get tackled because like and sometimes you get caught, let's be honest, but yeah, you got to learn how to fall. Like there's right and wrong ways to fall. Yeah. Yes. It's Which not always crazy. worth it fighting for an extra yard. No, no. It's, it's yeah, you way more ankle. worth it getting your body in the right position. Absolutely. Couldn't have said it better myself. Um, we got to talk about the U cuz it's back. You was back. Crystal I mean, ball. yeah, crystal, and crystal ball. ball and also the NIL deals. Dude. That's well, let's another start sto- there. Yeah, that's I mean, another story. Are you sitting there like, fuck, I really wish that I was four years younger than I am because I could have gotten some nice money at the Yeah, U. no, a thousand percent. I think it's obviously a great thing. I think college athletes should be paid. Yeah. But I also think it should be regulated in some sense. I The way that they're doing it is kind of a free-for-all. See, that's interesting you'd say that because I would think Miami – would be one of those schools that like let's just have it be like if you're a northwestern fan or like an oregon state fan you're like we need to regulate it yeah, because yeah. we're never going to be able to compete oh absolutely from but a you, recruiting standpoint yeah miami has the upper hand on 95 plus percent of colleges right a you're in miami and like that was always a thing like my thing was like where did you want to be in like january and february like in college when right. football's over like where do you want to wake up and like go to school and like walk outside and obviously that was a no-brainer and so from a football standpoint, NIL is like the best thing that ever happened because yes. now you can use all that you had and now tack on money to it and that you're in the city of Miami. Yeah. yeah. No, they run away with it. So you would have you would have done nicely. I know I know you were recruited you were recruited by some big big time schools, Ohio State, Clemson, um, who else was on that list? Uh Oregon. Or that you were considering Oregon. So t- I you know, now that we have NIL and recruiting is talked about so much and obsessed about so much. How, like, what was the di- besides weather? What was the difference maker between Miami and the other schools? And like, what was the pitch that you almost went to? So I was very close to going to Tennessee. Interesting. I was very close to going to Tennessee. And honestly, what won Miami was that my dad's from Miami, and I grew up a Miami fan. So I grew up a Hurricanes fan. Dolphins fan, all that. So literally loyalty kind of won that over. Right. Because like, you know, I I went to Knoxville and it was the Tennessee Georgia game and it was the checkered game. So, you know, Neyland was checkered. There's 107,000. It went into overtime. Tennessee ended up winning, I think. Like it, it, as good as it could have been on a visit, it was. And it actually happened to be my birthday that weekend too. So like it was just, so that was like my last visit. So that was October like sixth weekend. And then the 12th is when I committed. So, like, after that, I was like, oh, man. And you saw the power T and all that stuff? Yeah, and, and I mean, it was awesome. It was, yeah. it was a college, like, you know, not powerhouse necessarily, but in the sense of, like, football, like, it was hard to beat Neyland Stadium. Do you, you know, think most guys do it off of, like, that visit has a, a big effect or is it facilities? I'm just, I'm just fascinated by recruiting just because it's going to change so much in the next, you know, 10 years or, or 15 years. Or is it – the staff is like – like I, I know Saban probably just says, do you want to be a pro? Yeah. And if you want to be a pro, you come exactly. here and then we'll make and you And they a don't – and they – I mean, they earn that. They right. don't really recruit right. like that. They don't. Right. Um, I think it's – I think it's very personal to, like, the person, yeah. truly. Um, I don't think there's one thing gets all, but I will say, like, official visits, like, to games, like, I think that can, like, make or break, you know? So, like, if you're playing a bad team and you know the stadium's not going to be filled, like maybe not have officials yeah. you know, that weekend. Like yeah. I think that could be like a bad thing. Do you think winning and losing that game matters? Because I love – I mean, I just love fanatical, crazy college football fans, and they'll be like, yeah, we not only lost, but we had this guy, this guy, and this guy no, in the end No, I think zone. that has almost <laughs> – okay. unless you get like blown – like embarrassed, yeah, yeah. I don't think winning or losing matters in, in official visits. Yeah, I always think it's like the last visit you take has – that's the one that's fresh in your mind, yeah. right? Because, recency. Yeah, yeah re- the recency bias is a, a very real thing for anybody – but especially for like a, a 16, 17 year old kid that's making this decision. And, you know, the last place they're at, they're going to remember that in their heads. They're going to be like, yeah, you know what? I had the best time of my life last weekend, but I think this might be better. So you want to be that the last coach to talk to a guy. But what about, um, what about people that like random adults tweeting at you when you're 17 being like, hey, come to Knoxville. We need you not like, did that I, have <laughs> any effect on you? No, I, I think it's like, I think it's like cool until it becomes weird. You know, yeah, like yeah. I think there's a fun like it's it's cool like when the fan base like now knows who you are you know and you got offered from that school and like that first like week cool and then I think like after that like it, mm-hmm. it becomes a little weird and yeah. almost annoying. So did, you go ahead. I was gonna say, did you uh, did you have any hand in creating your own like highlight reel from from high school or did somebody else do that for you? And if no. So, did you have like input to the soundtrack on it? 
No, I think somebody else did my for me. Well, first it was like huddle, you know, like that was like complete coaching staff. Like, and I think I ended up doing a little bit of that as well. And then like whatever is on like YouTube, I had no control, you know, like I I'd had no hand in that. Yeah. It's always, um, it's always let the bodies hit the floor. Headstrong is another big one. And then sometimes they'll put like Nickelback as a soundtrack, but it's really, oh, down with the sickness. Yes. Another one. There's like four songs that you can put as your yes. as your mixtape. So while we're talking about uh, crazy college football fans, um, are you aware of Danny Boy Kane? He's a, probably so the, funny. They told me you were going to bring him. He, well, up. he's the biggest so, Kane fan in the world. Yeah, aware, not but aware. But okay, good. So shout out him. Can you shout him out? Shout out Danny Boy Kane. There we go. That's, about, all, you, I need. That's all I wanted. What about yeah. Hulk Kaniac? No. no, no, Big Papa yeah, Kane, okay. Hulk Kaniac, <laughs> yeah. throw him out. They're giving him a hell of a time. Um, do you think the U will actually be back? Because it is one of that game against Notre Dame when you scored. Uh, I remember just sitting there being like, "This is it. Like the U is back." This is what it should feel like, a big Saturday night game, Miami, packed house. And then, obviously, you guys were not back, uh, even close to back. I think no. you lost in, like, Shreveport to Louisiana Tech or something. Not that, that year. Game. That year we went to the Orange Bowl. Okay, all that right, year. but the but, year after, but yeah. Before and then after, yeah. Yeah, that was the and easiest was just, bet of my life. Like, yeah. Miami goes to Shreveport in December. I don't think no they shot. want to be there. No yeah, um, Shreveport was it because yeah. we went there my freshman year as well. That's, <laughs> yeah, I don't think they want to be there. They have casinos. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think they have two casinos. They it's, do. It's like Margaritaville and like one other one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've been to both. <laughs> I've been thrown out of one. Uh, it's always gray in Shreveport. It's it in is. the south, but yes. the sky color is just gray, overcast, but it and never it was, rains. It's just it, that's exactly how it was for our game. Yeah. Yeah. It, was, it was like a light, light rain. It was like yeah. a mist, and then it would shut off and then mist again. Yeah, you guys don't want to be there. So zero to ten. 10 being all the way back, where are they right now? Well, like you said, like the Notre Dame college game day, we were supposed to get blown out. All that, like that was highlight of college career. Like that was awesome. Yeah. Like the coolest thing ever. You do the convict, uh, convict touchdown yeah, dance, which cuffs. was sick. Yeah, yep. yeah. Yep. Catholic versus convicts. So really like that was a moment where you said like we were like, shit, we, we might be back. Right. And then lost last game of the season and then in the AC championship game to Clemson. And uh, I think now, I think, I think Crystal Ball is the right guy. And my thing is, like, even Alabama, right? Even Alabama in Alabama's prime. And also Clemson had a run, you know, recently, too. Like, those teams, like, the U back in those days was, like, dominating everybody 24-7. Like, it was just different. And the, mm -hmm. la the landscape of college football was different. So I think to get back there is probably impossible, you know, because it's just, like, it's a different day and age. But I think the U can still mean something. And I think Chris Wall is the guy – to do it like right, right now so we're like bad. a out of at a three you know, right a three out of ten yeah you know, like we have the u on our helmet we have the turnover chain and like that's i think about he's it. gonna get done get rid of that i think you have to paul chris i'm a i'm a wisconsin badger paul chris okay. killed the turnover chain yeah was that you were in that game the orange bowl yeah that yeah. was yeah okay yes. so yeah yes uh, he killed it when he when a guy uh, like a true midwestern dude wearing like gray sweatpants is like turnover chain my ass it's over. It was it's tough. dead. It was tough. Well, we I, killed I, you. I think we should have a rule. Like, if, if we're losing more than like 14 points, yeah. like, the turnover yeah. chain doesn't no come props. out. Like, no that, props. Yeah, no props. Were like, you ever allowed, cool. like, as an offensive player, were you allowed to look at the – did you ever, like, get close to it? Or they were like, this is a defensive thing? No, no, no. We got we could get close to it. And also, like, if we're on special teams, like, I, a couple offensive guys got it. I never did. Yeah. But, uh, but you know, any turnover counted. If you so, if on offense you had thrown like an interception, you chase the guy down, knock the ball out, and recover it. Yeah, do you get I'm the turnover? De chain? I'm definitely running off the field for a play to get the turnover. Chain. Yeah, yeah, so you got to take advantage. I forgot that was that Orange Bowl. Yeah, that must have sucked though, because Paul Chris did like he's got the least swag of any coach <laughs> in America, and I love him. <laughs> But he, yeah, he ended it for you. Yeah, it was tough. <laughs> uh, that, that was that was a tough loss. To and it was that, that game was in Miami. It was in Miami. It was a home game. Yeah, we killed you, right? Uh, it was ten points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. I never was doubting it though. Let's just say that I wasn't uncomfortable. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> All right. So back, like, I do just want Miami to be back. It's one of those schools. It's good for college football, right? And it's like they're the bad guy. It's just fun. I I actually love the fact that they're outwardly being like here's all the money we're paying nil i want that to happen you know what i mean yeah well that's like that's their pool now right like they're using the, that's that's one of the biggest pools like we haven't been one of the best in the acc for three four whatever years more than that 
Well, we went to AC's championship game four years ago. Yeah, but Clemson is just no. Clemson was far and yeah, away, yeah. far yeah. and away, and I think they won the national championship that year too. Yeah, they were, so. yeah. No, they they are they are the peak of ACC until this year. Yeah, yeah. The, the good news is the ACC kind of sucks now. So oh, it's, although Clemson it, 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 it has, has a crap ten yeah, wins, ten games. Shoot. That's the best part about Clemson season. Everyone's like, Clemson sucks. Like. They won 10 games, yeah, and but they, they, lost, yeah, yeah. And but, they but, lost by seven to the national but, champion. But the ACC was just bad this year. Just like no, It's very to easy to be, what is it, King Turd on Shit Mountain. If you can pay enough money, and if you can be like, the U's back, come here, look what we're doing, um, there's definitely like an opportunity. There's a window yeah. for the U to be back no this year. I, I think it. I saw something this morning on Instagram where it like listed, there was like, 20 guys almost that got paid like anywhere from 35K to 50K. For yeah, no, that, yeah, that was yesterday they announced yeah. it. Yeah. I think it was with with you guys, with the Rosenhaus guys. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're hooking it up. Hey, nice. hey, yeah, hey, yeah. Hey, let's get it. Go to the U. You get paid. We're going to get back to Braxton in a second, but before we do, I want to talk to you about HelloFresh. HelloFresh is uh, a great meal prep service. It's delicious. It's fast. It's easy. The new year is a great time to focus on what's most important to you. Whether it's saving money by ordering less takeout, learning to cook, or prioritizing your wellness, HelloFresh is here to help with endless options to make cooking at home simple and enjoyable. They deliver pre-portioned ingredients right to your door. You get farm fresh produce that arrives within a week. So you get convenience without skimping on quality. Skip the trip to the grocery store, save yourself the wait in long holiday lines and ensure that you don't waste money on excess food. I oftentimes put stuff back in my refrigerator, think I'm gonna eat it later. Turns out it goes bad. Big waste of money, big waste of time. Let HelloFresh do your shopping for you, and it'll cut back on time that you spend in the kitchen so you can spend it on your other resolutions with meals that are ready in about 30 minutes or less. Plus, quick and easy meals, including 20-minute recipes. They've got low prep and easy cleanup options, so you get a faster route to putting food on the table. And they've got dessert. Satisfy your sweet tooth with seasonal, limited-time goodies like Dunkaroo's Cookie Dough or Vanilla Delight Cheesecake. 72% cheaper than a restaurant meal of the same quality, and you can save on average over 65 bucks a month when you order HelloFresh instead of grocery shopping. That's a lot of money. It adds up. Go to HelloFresh.com slash PMT16. That's PMT16 is the promo code. Get up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. That's HelloFresh.com slash PMT16. And then at checkout, use the code PMT16. Get 16 free meals and three free gifts. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Here's more Braxton Berrios. On the Jets now, on the Jets this season and last season, um, I got to ask you about Dr. Heat, about Greg Williams, former <laughs> defense coordinator. So we've heard stories that in practice, he would just like send the house against the first team offense and – and Adam Gase would have to be like, hey, man, we're trying to work through some other stuff over here. Like, I know that we're not going to get blitzed every down on Sunday. Can you maybe just, like, dial it back a little bit for a few plays? Is that is that remotely true? Uh, and the competition periods, 1,000%. Because But those are, hey, you call your defense, we'll call our offense. Yeah. Uh, not in the scouting periods because he has, no, you know, the offense handles the defense on the scouting period. So that's not necessarily true. But, um, yeah. He just loved to <laughs> blitz, though. He, he – big, big – cover zero guy yeah. it's all the time yeah. i like that um zach wilson we'll, we'll talk about him but before we talk about zach wilson did you get caught up in mike white hype like we did that's we, my that's that's my guy i mean we absolutely. thought he was joe montana absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. i mean he come he starts his first game in four years those for 400 yards and four or five i mean like yeah we were how could you not we how were could you not? we were all the way swept up did and you i mean mike the Bengals white. were what the number yeah, well, yeah, they're good. Teams. You guys were tight. Yeah, you you beat the, the Titans, Titans and the Bengals. the Bengals. Yeah. Did you think about telling Mike like, hey, you should fake, like, you should pretend that you sprained your ankle? That's why everybody said like, just walk walk off on that one. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. like, that was pulling you know, Antonio Brown. But no, no, he was he was in his zone. He was feeling it, and like yeah. he came on the meeting. And was like, well, if you ask me, I should have been the number one pick. Like you love that. <laughs> yeah, you absolutely <laughs> yes. love that. Like as your quarterback. <laughs> yeah, that's phenomenal. How how was uh, like Zach Wilson's rookie year? I you know dealing with a rookie who has to get everything thrown at him, a team that, you know, is in a rebuilding phase. Do you think – did you see it? Did you see the flashes? You're like, okay, this guy's legit, legit. No, absolutely. And you can, like – there's flashes all throughout the year. You know, like the Tennessee, like pointing to Corey Davis, like making a play within a play. And, you know, obviously he got hurt, and so he was out, whatever, those few weeks. And then he came back and, like, was a – it was a better – you know, learned a lot in that time and was a better version of himself in the second half than he was in the first half of the year. And, like, you know, you see that growth within one season. And, like, you got to take in – Learning the offense completely, like 
learning your teammates completely. You have the New York media. You have, and then it's NFL football. You know, right. it's it's, it's, it's going to be tough for anybody. And obviously, you know, a rookie is it's it's just heightened that much. Do you think he should maybe ditch the headband when you guys are getting your ass kicked? Because that always it's similar to turnover chain. When you're getting your ass kicked and you have a headband, it's like no, 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 no. take that off. But that's him. That's yeah, him. I, th- I think you got to still take it off. You think you really? just got to? It's like a mood ring. He just has to like, all right, we're getting our ass so, kicked. No, like in the same when sense, he take, like, yeah. when he takes it off, he's just throwing up the white flag and saying, "Yeah, I'm, I'm done." Well, then yeah. you could fake him out and take it off and then come back on him. But you know then what you're I mean? then you're playing with yourself. Well, no, you're not, playing with them. No, you're not allowed to do that. He's a Mormon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, he set me up for it. Yeah, latter days yeah, are no. for the boys. <laughs> That's what we say around here. <laughs> um, all right, so who who's the most uh, influential guy in the pro level on your career? I have an answer, but I want to hear your answer first. Growing up, Devin Hester. Okay. Which is like funny because like I'd never really been a kick returner for a whole season until this year. Mm-hmm. And, you know, obviously all pro. But like growing up, like he was like my all idol. Famer, yep. My idol. Yep. Yeah. Yep. What were you gonna say? Uh I was gonna say Julian Edelman because you have figured out a way to post a ton of pictures with your shirt off on Instagram, which I'm I'm guessing Edelman's like it was like playbook in one hand and then Instagram in the other and and Jules was like, All right. So anytime you're anywhere near a beach, make sure you get at least like four or five pictures so you can see. But pop I didn't them think he was later. that big of a shirt off guy. Uh, <laughs> did you ever see his Father's Day post where he's like, "Happy Father's Day, yeah. love you, Dad," and it was just a picture of his dad like over his shoulder while he had his shirt off. Like you couldn't even see his dad. All you could see was Jules' abs. That was a self suck. Good <laughs> yeah. for him. Good for him. But you, you're pretty. You do. I mean, look. If you got it, flaunt it. But was Jules, did he say that to you? Like, hey, man, the, he, the key he, to this league is make sure you have your shirt off whenever you're taking an Instagram picture. He was instrumental in a lot of things. Instagram was was not one of them. Okay. But, I mean, yeah, we had a few conversations. Maybe it did, was just, uh, yeah, he, he just influenced you without you even knowing. Exactly. Yeah. Did, yeah. Uh, did anyone ever accidentally call you Julian? Or Wes around the Patriots facility, <laughs> not accident on purpose, absolutely not accidentally. <laughs> it's like we got another Wes. This is Wes three. Yeah, well, speaking of Mike White, like he refers to Julian as like dad. So he'd be like, hey, have you talked to your dad recently? Uh. Like, he does it all the time. Like that's <laughs> yeah. These pictures, you you had a stretch there where it was just shirt off every day. I'm looking at Julian. Julian's actually cleaned up. Well, his I think we've shamed him. Recently. I'm like recently. Recently. he's a we've shamed yeah, him. and he's a dad. We put it in he's his head. To- that like the the Father's Day one was a little I, much. You literally wouldn't know. You wouldn't be able to see his dad in the picture. So it was like, he he's like those TikTok kids who are like, you know, like shout out Nana, and then like Nana's dying right behind him, and they're doing a and video. Doing a yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shout out my dad here, my abs. Nana, but no, you, I mean you, you're a good looking dude. So you you I guess wow, you deserve you. to do it. Man card. Um, <laughs> no, hey, listen, we we're supporting each other in 2020. Yeah, guys, listen. I love up. That. Yeah, yeah, right. Love that. So uh-huh. we can say that about each other. So keep po- posting them. Just be careful about how many because then we will start. Like probably our fans are going to get in your mentions now, Fair being enough. like, "Oh shit, thirst trap." Um, that's just a mental game though. If you can co- overcome that, you can overcome anything. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let the games begin. <laughs> you had uh, you had one of my favorite plays of the year this year which was the design lateral downfield oh yeah yeah that was sick so yeah. cocaine is that what it's called yep it's called the, <laughs> the play is called cocaine yep that was, was it from adam gase's days what was <laughs> wow that's amazing that was his coach yeah that was that, yeah, that was that was, that was a play call yeah so it, it's a it's a great play I've, I'm a big advocate of more planned downfield laterals in football. I think it'll change the game if you can execute it. You if are? you can execute it, I know a few teams. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I know a few I teams about it tried every it. Show. <laughs> a few yeah. teams tried it, and it didn't go so well. Right, because they don't they don't coach the players to throw the laterals correctly. They don't coach the players to stand at adequate distance behind the player and then run onto the ball right. But yep. you you worked it out perfectly. Yeah, we 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 had that one in the playbook actually for a few weeks. And like you know, we'd put it in when the defense on third and whatever, third and long, long would give us the look. And so finally, we got we called it, and everybody in the huddle was like smiling. We're like, all right, well, this is going one or two ways, and it worked. Yeah, and it worked phenomenally. It, it's great when when teams run it when it's not a desperation situation because if it's desperation, the other team sees it coming a mile away. Yeah, absolutely. And they're able to defend it, cause some turnovers. It was like in the second quarter or something. Yeah, it was yeah. like in the second quarter. And if you throw it towards the sideline, then if you miss it, it goes out of bounds. Out of bounds. Not a big deal. Really, no harm done. 
Um, I just I want you to continue. I want to give you positive reinforcement on that play, continue and hope that innovate. you continue. Yeah, it is a cool play when it's when it, when works. it works. Yes, yeah. yes. Tell very coach cool. like let's. I know this podcaster who's very happy with the fact that you ran this play. We should continue doing that. Do we please? I'll give him a call. Yeah. Okay. Whoa, you're talking to the Jets right now? Why? Why are, are you, you being that? tampered of with? Of course. No, I think I. I don't are you even open know. to being tampered with? I, so you guys have started. <laughs> you started. You why, started why, talks. Why wouldn't I? I'm not you guys have started talks. See, We've talked. See, just We've talked. Over We've being talked. Like, Don't do it. We've talked. So let's do a headline grab. What's your favorite city in America? <laughs> you like Miami? Raleigh, North Carolina. Raleigh, North. Mm. Oh, okay. Panthers. Oh, you want to be reunited with Sam Darnold? Did you, did that hurt your feelings sometimes when people were like, "What?" Like Sam Darnold hasn't gotten a fair shot. His best receiver is Braxton Berrios. Yeah, no, that hurts. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And, and luckily, I don't, I don't see many of <laughs> that, but like, somehow it comes off. And yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like, oh, Zach Wilson had Braxton Berrios <laughs> yeah, to work like, with. And it's like, fuck? I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> my bad. Just a total, you're just minding your own business. Yeah, and you're exactly. Just stray. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't hurt anybody. <laughs> um, we, are you looking to maybe try to get out of the AFC East for the first time in your career? Mm. I'm indifferent. I'm indifferent. Mm-hmm. Like I, I don't I, like I don't that. I don't look at I don't look at it as like oh I want to go to this division or this conference you know like I, that's not that's not like where my head's at at mm-hmm. least. What's uh if you're if you're listing your values for what you're looking for in a football team? Well, uh, yeah, here here are the values that potentially a football team has: um, no state income tax, near a beach, or brutally cold. List those three. Power rank those. Power rank? Yeah. One, out two, of, three. Oh. Yeah, like what's most important? Out of those? Yeah. No state income tax. Okay. All right. Then I would say beach. Okay. And then brutally cold. Okay. So Miami. Yes, yeah, so the so Dolphins. You, gonna, or the Bucks. Or do the Bucks. Danny Amendola. Yeah, you could go to the Bucks. You go to the Bucks. You could, yeah. Follow Tom Brady. Mm hmm. Has Tom given you a call? Were you, I'll rephrase that. Were you offended when Tom did not give you a call to be like, hey, come down to Tampa Bay with me? <laughs> No, no, I I understand my place there. <laughs> wasn't it, it is wasn't fair, there yet. It is fair though to say you are a Super Bowl champion, right? Technically, you've got a yeah, ring. I do. Yeah. Do, yeah. You, do you now? Is that a ring that you like would take out and wear or no? No, never. It's I mean it's 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 huge. Yeah. A, but also it's just not like maybe like for one thing you know like but I, but I don't even know what that one thing is like where I would wear it to like yeah. I don't know an appropriate setting a reunion of that team it, that would probably be it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really. yeah. That, what do you think your like most important contribution to that team was that year? Well, obviously not much on the field. Um, <laughs> but you have to. You, you have to tell, let's be very, very clear. But you have to tell yourself like you were on that team. Yeah, no, no doubt. And so and the that's, things that, and that you do, and that yes. like is like the hard part. Like as a competitor, it's like you know, like you see it, and like obviously it's it's very good, and you can say that you have a ring, and you know I do, and all that's great. But it like it, it sucks on the other sense. But I mean, I was still there. I was in the meetings. I honestly, I did most of the scouting reports like each week, mm-hmm. and like I'd, I'd give them to all the guys. So like, yeah, I try to uh, help in any way I can. That's but. I mean, Belichick's probably the best coach to have that uh, to to be on a team where you're not getting a lot of pr- uh, field time, but you're on the practice squad because he probably is like he's the most important part of the organization. Like yeah. Belichick would definitely. Well, I was say, on IR. Yeah, I wasn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but like he like he was the most important part. Yeah, no, I mean, and and honestly, like the the learning, the pure learning experience there is like absolutely invaluable. Like that 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 whole year, like I I learned more about like football, and then you know obviously got to listen to Brady take over a meeting and say, hey guys, like this is how I look at it. Like this is, the, and like that, going to that to now you know a rookie quarterback, like I can start to see like okay what he's saying, and like everybody says like be friendly to the quarterback. Like, yeah, I know when the coverage goes all which ways like I know what he feels is open and like that's where I'm going to try to show up it's funny you say like the the competitor in you because obviously if you make the NFL you have an insane competitive drive and you know you're able to do things that you know 99.9999 percent of the world can't but I hear that and I'm like man I would love to win a ring just like being on the bench and never playing (laughs) like never having any pressure and just being like a dude that hangs out 
Yeah, but it, but <laughs> like, it feels be much sick. better when like you feel like I know, you earn it. You're you, know? you yeah. and I'm me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's yeah. a big difference. Like, See, <laughs> if I stepped onto the field, I'd probably die. Yeah. Like, if, if that'd be the most scary part of my entire year. I would hate stuff. Like, I want to be on the sideline. Yeah, yeah, like I see, I, I like, like watch, ro- rooting them on. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. I watch an oh. NBA team. I'm like the twelfth man. That guy's cool. I want to. That be guy's him. awesome. You yes, know what? I, I'm. I'm the first guy to put your fours up at the yeah. start of the fourth quarter. <laughs> yes, I, I get You're that. You're the ringleader. Yeah, exactly. I actually truly was that guy in high school football. That was. The what only position thing did you I was play? Good at. I played a little bit of wide receiver, <laughs> kicker, and a little bit of, of scout team fullback, which I was way too small to be playing. Had no business doing. <laughs> um, how much of your time is spent on your uh, outfits? Not much at all. It feels like you've upped your game. Thank you. Yeah, but not, but not much. Well, day to day, I, I'm in sweats. Right. Like every day in the season, I'm in sweats. So like, finally, when I get to like blow the dust off the back of my closet and do something, it's it's all there. Mm-hmm. Because you do. Yeah. I mean, you, the pictures. Are you looking right now? Yeah, I'm looking. I got a whole thing. Yeah. Do you have a uh, getting on the, this checkered? Uh, I feel like checkered suit coat's more, pretty nice. More players should bring two sets of clothes to a game. Like one if you win, one if you lose. Yes. Well. Like the reindeer outfit was like I, I wore reindeer outfit after Jacksonville, which was just the day after Christmas or mm-hmm. the day after that, and like that was the same thing. Like I wore normal clothes in there, and I had the onesie in my bag, and it was never going to see the light of day if we lost. Right. But I, but I agree, and I honestly I do. So like I'll have like an outfit, whatever I wear in, and like you know say it's like a suit or what. And if we lose, like I'm not putting that back on. Like mm-hmm. that's going in the bag. I'm putting my sweats on and I'm walking out. That's smart. Yeah. That's a very heads up thing to do. I feel like more players should take that into Cam account Newton. because like when you when you show up at yeah. the podium, yeah, and you've got like a live <laughs> like a, a barely barely dead raccoon wrapped around your head, <laughs> and you're talking tails, about how you went tails twitching. <laughs> you went five for twenty two with three interceptions. Like that's not that's not helping anybody. Yeah, no, I know, and and it's funny. Like I don't know how many people think of that, but like that's something I do. I was like, well, if we you know if this ends up happening, and we lose. I, I don't want to look like that guy you know yeah. that like yes i'd rather look good than win when you were on the patriots was that when josh mcdaniels left for like 12 hours that was before that was right before yeah. okay I think I, that was a year before all right yeah so he he obviously came back because he was you know he's trusted to be the, the head of that offense in new england um but then on the other side you've got an up-and-comer running the defense steve belichick um is that his normal voice or is he like? Is he fucking with all of us to make us think that he sounds exactly like his dad? No, I think as much as he would love to mess with everybody, that is his actual voice. He just sounds exactly like dad, huh? Yeah. Um, does he do those weird mouth things during practice, or is that just when he knows the camera's on? <laughs> no <it>? comment. <laughs> uh, was it really weird when Sam Darnold got mono? It was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. Okay. With like, I mean, like was he, was he able I, to take I, a joke about Sam. it? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, there, there was there was a time that he like wasn't in the facility, obviously, where it's like, okay, we probably shouldn't joke about this. And then like when he got back, it, it was it was it's an all time. It was free for all. Yeah, it's an all. time I mean, it's just thing. one of those things. Like, like what can you do? You know, like at that time, it's almost like. Stop I mean, it's kissing. A, as invisible as COVID in a sense, you know, like yeah. you don't know if somebody has mono and like you kiss somebody. So what? And then it just turns out like it's the second game of the year and, yes. and you're out for four weeks because it's, yeah, because you made out. Did you see Congrats. those same ghosts that he saw? <laughs> Were they on the field? No, that's, that, was, that, was, that was wrong by ESPN. I that agree. Was, that was, was wrong. Wrong. I agree. That was, was wrong. wrong. Because was wrong. Like, it's you, one thing to have like audio. I get it for all your content. That's fine. But like in the middle of a game, you know, and, and something like that, and when you don't do that to everybody, you know, you yeah. just pick one person and record that. That's wrong. That's it, that's, that's bad ball. Because be, I like that. That's bad ball. That's bad mm-hmm. ball by ESPN. Because you go to the sidelines, you're talking to your coach, you're being honest with your coach, with the understanding that like, hey, okay, we're we're contributing this content to ESPN. They're not going to fuck us over yeah. and make us look like shit. And they take one thing. Um, that I'm sure stuff like that gets said a lot during a games lot. by different people. A lot. But now it's associated forever with Sam Darnold. Yeah, and it's like, you know, when, when the offense isn't scoring, I'm sure the defense is like, uh, what's wrong with the all You know, and says, goes on the offense. And same thing when the offense is going and the defense can't stop anybody. We say the same thing, mm-hmm. but it doesn't, it's not because, like, we don't like the defense or the players. It's just, it's the heat of the battle. It's it's football. Like, mm-hmm. you just, you just shouldn't do that. I like that, bad. though, that you yeah. were, um, that you, you wouldn't joke about Sam Darnold when he was out of the facility. But when he came, like, you wouldn't say it behind yeah. his yeah, back. No, 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 no. Back yeah. And you're like, right hey, to his face. you suck any face at yeah. Pig and Parrot last yeah. night or what? Yeah. Yeah. Way to party kiss. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, all right, last question. So we, we had Jimmy Graham, another, another Miami legend, on the show. Um, and it was the last week of the Bears season. Uh, obviously, Matt Nagy got fired last year. Adam Gase gets fired. How awkward is it in a facility when it's like everyone in the world knows this is going to end? 
if we're just all we're it. just pretending that it's all normal. Well, that's the thing because like nobody really pretends. Like right. everybody knows, and like right. that. I don't know if that makes it worse or better, because you know, obviously, whatever two years ago, you know, we finished two and fourteen or whatever it was, but like everybody knew kind of midway through the year that that was it, it was kind of done, right? Right. And it's just like one of those things where like you don't know some of the coaches would joke about it and then others wouldn't talk about it. And then, you know, we won two games and everybody's partying like, you know, we saved the jobs. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's 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 a interesting uh, it's an interesting dynamic. Yeah, it's just it's one of those. I'm always fascinated with like the human side of, well, of it's a, sports, but it's and a like, business. Right. And everybody gets that. Right. And like that's where I like I, I always say, like, I wish it was just football and not a business. But like you can't have those you know, mutual, you can't have those independently exist. You right. Know, there comes one with the other. And so like, I think everybody, you know, you're a grown man and you know, you know, you're the track record is like, okay, like this is going to happen. So it's one of those things like same thing, Sam, like you're out for the next three weeks, but we're still gonna give you shit for it. You right. Know? Like it's the same way. Like we know we're out. We might as well have fun while we're here. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, my last, last question, uh, going back, you mentioned that Zach, you know, he likes to point downfield sometimes. I think he points downfield a little bit too much. Like he he's almost addicted to he gets out of the pocket and he always puts his finger out there and he he just points in a direction you know either something really awesome or really bad is about to happen but is he actually like instructing you to do certain things or is he sometimes just point to like get a little bit of swag going before he throws the ball no well obviously with that one in Tennessee that was that was to Corey Davis go deep I'm yeah. I'm launching it and touchdown sick play. Um, and then the other words, yeah, when, when you kind of point when you're rolling out, like you got everybody chasing you. You got the linebackers about to come hit you. Like I, I don't really know what other uh, like example of that, but normally it's for a point. It's not just like headband swag, point throw. You know, yeah. like it's, he does it's, it a it's lot, for a though. reason. I've noticed he does it a lot. Um, Billy, you're a big Jets fan. Do you want to ask questions? any questions? Yeah. Any last questions? He loves Billy? you. Billy's in love with you. Yeah. What's going on? He was I like, celebrities that. make me nervous. Like we've. Like you're you're obviously an NFL player, big big time deal, all pro, but like we've had like Adam Sandler and stuff. He's like th- he wasn't nervous for that or anything like really? that. It's like Braxton Berrios. You're, I'd be nerv- nervous. He's got you nervous. <laughs> yeah. Quick question. So you've been with the Patriots. You've been with Adam Gase in the last coaching staff. Do you feel that there's a huge difference in this coaching staff and this environment with the Jets? Even if you leave, there's still like serious like possibilities of promise going forward. Who's the coach you're referring to? With the Jets? Coach Sal. What was that? They give me shit for my pronunciation of his name. So I can never do it. <laughs> it's funny because I noticed how you like didn't bring him off. Because <laughs> you said the Patriots coach that, yeah. then you said Gase, yeah, and then you yeah. just said, no, no. Yeah, yeah, you just try to wean off of it. Yes, That's funny. Yes. Um, no, uh, truly, truly, I, I think they're, they're heading in a very good direction. Uh, I, I love the coaching staff there. They, uh, they're, most of them, they're young, they know what they're doing communicate well and like Sala is is a phenomenal coach and a great storyteller so if you love him so much why don't you announce your re-signing right now well it's that's you know it's two sides but you you could say it you could be like <laughs> I will I will do everything in my power I'll take a pay cut I'm looking at your agent's eyes right now I'll take a pay cut to be a New York <laughs> Jet <laughs> We'll see what if happens. you love him so we'll much, I don't happens. know. I, listen, if I love the guy like that, I'd be like, hey, I'll fucking take it. Yeah, how good is he at storytelling? Phenomenal. Because if he's a great storyteller, I would take less money. Yes, to, to like, hear the yeah. stories. Yes. Just a, to stick around for the story. A great storyteller is worth like that's you can't put a price tag. It's on that. Like, yeah, well, no, you could. It's like I don't know, three million t- <laughs> or ten million, three years. Yeah, that's that's. How <laughs> <laughs> so what do you mean? Like he's a uh, he's a great storyteller, like ghost stories or no, like like team meeting stories, but like a random and like you have nowhere where you have no idea where they're going, but they always kind of like full circle. And actually, some don't. It's just like a fun way to start the day. Is there Love one it. that sticks out to you? Like his no, because they're long. There? Like I couldn't remember one to save my life right now. I gotta like, hear a story that I gotta get. We gotta, gotta get on. Y'all, yeah. ha- you gotta have get to get on. Have to. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, Braxton, thank you so much, man. Congrats again, All Pro. Uh, congrats on your future deal if you want our help we will help deal okay so we get one percent of whatever you sign for and we will help we will start Usually tweeting out 10. facts stats Usually yeah, 10. Wow. yeah. Give them the hometown i got a break discount big discount yes, we're setting an example yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right thanks man appreciate you guys yeah. braxton was brought to you by wood wood is a new men's grooming line offering products across hair body beard and shave with wood products you're going to look your best you're going to smell your best you're going to feel your best now all you have to do is live your best Wood is for the guy that knows that his best life doesn't just come to him. He has to go out and find it. Wood works and smells as good as it looks. 
They've got three special scents. They've got Golden Hour, Summer House, and Fresh Tracks. Hank is a fan of Fresh Tracks. That's the Oak Moss and Pink Pepper scent. I like the Summer House, the Coastal Lavender, and the Sea Salt. We love all their products here. They've got uh, products for hair care, moisturizer, deodorant, facial cleanser, body and beard care, and more. It's easy. Just level up literally everything in your bathroom all at once. It's actually an underrated baller move. If you go into your bathroom and you look and every single thing that you have is by the same brand. Mm -hmm. But in, if you want to do that, you have to find a brand that works, that has good products across everything. It's like when you see somebody wearing a tracksuit and their shoes, socks, and the tracksuit itself is all the same company. That's a sick look. People know that you're serious about yourself when you, uh, when you have that look going on. Same thing with your bathroom. If you get wood, you can get Woods hair care, moisturizer, deodorant, facial cleanser, body and beard care, all from the same company, all from the best ingredients, all from uh, the easiest place to find anything that you need for your body to look good and feel good. So check them out. Go to getwood.com. That's G-E-T-W-O-U-L-D, getwood.com, or at your local CVS. Okay. Uh, let's do FAQs. Okay. Hey, Dad Cat. P.F. Shea, P.F. She, and Hanky Panky. Hanky Panky. Quick question. When you say certain numbers are not eligible to be selected in the lottery machine, why the hell is that? Thank so, you. Because sometimes we're just too lazy to put them back in, and yeah. so there are numbers that have been drawn recently, and um, it's a long way for Big Cat to reach over and yep. take the ball out and put it in the top. Big news, though. Today, I went through the entire uh, machine for a, a sportsbook promo that we had. If you opted in and you bet the Steelers this weekend, you will get a refund. On the uh, parlay promo? No. It was just straight bets. Oh, it was the ping pong. Yeah, it was the ping pong balls. But I went through the whole thing. Every single number is still there, which I was shocked. I thought for sure there was a couple numbers that were just weren't there. They all are there. It's an incredible feat. Um, yeah, there it is. Good luck to everyone. Also, I'm thinking about buying myself a little birthday gift. I'm going to try to hunt down maybe a bigger, more, ex more expansive uh, ping pong ball machine. That up in my game. Unnecessary. Yeah, it yeah, does. Yeah, like yeah, upgrading do your, and I'm your ping pong it. ball yep. machine. Wasn't this one like it. five grand? It was th it was 1500 Paid for itself. And How then much some. bigger? I and it know. came broken, right? Yeah, it came broken from China. That's why we're boycotting. That's why I'm boycotting the Olympics. Have you ever thought about the fact that that probably has a microphone inside of it? Yeah. So they know that we're boycotting the Olympics. Good. Yeah. Free Tibet. We, we took our eye off the ball of Tibet, by the way. Everyone's talking about... Taiwan. Yeah. No one's talking about Tibet. We had concerts for him and everything. The Beastie Boys. Yeah. Free Tibet, bitch. Let me just live, Hank. I'm going to look. Okay. I'm going to see if I could just make the entire my entire like corner a game show. I would love to see like what um what your your spending breakdown is if you have one of those apps that categorizes things. Yeah. Into like okay, meals, uh utilities, um, uh, household items. Mm -hmm. Where does upgrading your ping pong ball lottery machine? It's a fall? must. How do you categorize it's a, it's that? A, it's a need, not a necessities. Want. Yes. Uh, the ending song last episode was that Place with the Weatherman. Yes, we are out of take on me remixes. Um, oh, that was a planted question. Nice. No, it was a real question someone sent in. I usually wouldn't answer it, but this is you know shout out to Sean Flaherty, Nick Roger, those kids. There's guys that. Have made a lot of the great to take on me remixes over the years. Shout out. Uh, shout out to them. We have run out. You know. Can you. I've can, been recycling though, but you know. For tonight's, can you. Can we push P? No. Why not? Is that. Are you not P? I'm not P. Is pushing. Is pushing P over? Oh, yeah. The yeah. Cardinals tweeted uh, pushing P, and then they got yeah. fucking trapped. Oh, they did? I yeah. found out about it on Friday. KFC and I was did like, a one-minute man on Yeah, today. I found out about it on Friday, and I was like, I'm. Pr I, it's probably like 10 more hours. Cardinals are, when I find are out, not it's it. It's it. It's KFC over. did the video explaining it to like the, the non-people that were in on it, and that's kind of when it's like, yeah. once everyone's in on it. Yeah, no, once no I find out, it. it's over. I never, yeah, I, I was never, I didn't even fully understand it. Um... This is not a planned one. This is an FAQ that goes on in my head constantly for some reason on the daily recently. But can I fight Hank? Yes. I don't know why. I just really want to fight him for whatever reason. In my head, he has a very punchable voice. Thanks, guys. A Philly fan? Rude. Philly fan? Probably. No, Probably. you know what? I'm going to say no. I'm going to say I think you have to earn the right to fight Hank. Agreed. For the right amount of money, yes. Get your clout up. 
Yeah, how many followers does he have? I don't know. I just did a text message number. Remember when, when Billy like life goal was to fight Jake Paul and then he realized Jake Paul's actually kind of jacked and a really good fighter and then he just stopped talking about it? <laughs> there was a certain moment in time <laughs> that it could have been eclipsed. <laughs> That time is gone. Dude, Jake, <laughs> Jake Paul would have murdered you. I think. I think back in the uh, Nate Robinson days, there was a chance. But now he spent the last what? How many years? Like past year, just only training. Hey, look! I can't talk. You fought for my honor against Jose Canseco, but it's just. I've been blogging. Very funny. <laughs> Who's the guest you would want to return to the show that maybe it didn't go so great the first time around? Mm, good question. I feel like there's a lot of Zoom ones we've done over the last year yeah. or so that we had to do them on Zoom because of COVID. But if it was in person, it could have been a lot better. Yeah, I, I'd love to have like Rex Ryan in studio. I think that in the first one, I thought went well. Yeah, but um, ooh, good question. I'd have John Cena back in studio, but he if he was in a good mental again. headspace. Yeah, only if we're yeah a certain amount of time away from a big life event. We check into him like. Eight hours before the interview. Yeah. Has anything bad happened in the last week? Uh, um, let's see. Let's see. Who, who would you think, Hank? That we've like, it, it well, didn't go great. I thought the Tim the Tatman interview was, was very average to below average. And if that was in person, there wasn't a click yeah. that I was hoping for. And I think it's there. I loved him. I know. That's I, what I'm saying. I think, if, actually, I think if you guys did an interview in person, it would be a lot better. better and well received. I, I've been watching a lot of Tim videos on youtube recently he's, he's, he's a very funny guy very funny that's what in the interview is more it came across as more of a generic type interview yeah like Got tell it. us about your life tell us about yeah. video which is honestly like something that we wanted to know about but i would love yeah let's get tim put tim on the bench with us yeah like i i, I would let him sit at the table what what do you what do you think billy you saying bolt was good but i feel the like audio was better oh, yeah I don't, I don't know that was the one that first came to mind there's some that it's just like yeah that was where like i don't I don't think I ever want Dak back on, unless I, he was in. I person. disagree. MVP? Yeah. If he was in person, and I would maybe... do. I think anyone in person. I mean, Braxton Barris is a great example. Like, yeah, no, that I agree interview, with that. If it was on Zoom, yeah, it, it, it wouldn't have sucked, have hit. It yeah. wouldn't have hit the same. I don't yeah. think it would have sucked. I would. I would have different. Yeah. I would have Miley Cyrus back on. <laughs> back yeah. on. Yeah, she's like some people said it didn't go that great the mm -hmm. first time. I think that she's a, a kind of misunderstood person. So Lawrence I'd, Taylor. I'd love to have her back on. I'd have Ryan Pace back on. Maybe change my question. Exit interview. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, sup, G O T Y cat, Bonk F T, Buffalo's son, and the crew. When watching games with friends or family, they always ask me who I bet. Everyone knows I like to gamble, and they like to know what side I'm on, which is reasonable. But why every single time that I tell someone what team I bet on, do they ask how much money I put on it? Mm. Are they hoping to unit chain me if it's too low? Are they ready to virtue signal that I have a gambling problem if it's too high? I'm a poor cards college student, and my average unit is five dollars. No unit shaming, no safe unit space. Shaming. And I've just gotten so annoyed at the question that I just don't respond to it anymore. What should I say when ask when people ask how much I bet on a game? Okay, so I think they're not trying to unit shame you. I think it's if you're with well, it's two different cases. One is if you're with other gamblers, they might be trying to unit shame you, which no one should do. You bet within your means. You bet you know whatever you feel comfortable with. If it's with non gamblers. I think they're just their curiosity of like, ooh, how much we got risking here is what really the question is. Like, how important is this? How invested should I get along with you? That's the question. I also think that if you're watching it, if they're non gamblers and they're watching with you, you're out at a bar, they want to know, okay, if you hit this bet, how many free shots should we mm -hmm. expect you to pay for for the table? They're already they're already trying to tax your winnings. Yes. So if you say like I'm betting fifty bucks on it, you win fifty bucks. They're expecting like next next bucket is on you. Yes, yes, but I I think it's a normal it's a normal qu gambler to it's gambler. Awkward, though. I agree. It's super yeah, no, awkward. no, no. The, it's, only the only time I, I ever ask is if someone says I have a lot on this game, and then I'll be like, but also I would never ask someone how much they have on this on a game unless there's someone I know very well because that then my question is more like, are you is this a big game or a small game for you? That's the question I'm asking. Yeah, it, it's helpful to know sometimes, like, if you're watching a game with somebody that you know has a shitload of money on Correct. it. Correct. And you put a small amount of money on it. Um, like, for example, if we're watching a game on Sunday, I know that Dave has $250,000 on the line. 
I do not have $250,000. I'm making maybe what I think might be a big bet for myself. I know that I don't need to be pulling a Brandon Walker and running my mouth up about it. So, Damn, yeah. Brandon got astray. Well, I love Brandon. By the way, it doesn't. Us for Chicago. Taping it tonight for the crown. Hank, how do you feel about, about being ditched at the altar by regs? <laughs> regs? Like Reagan. It's like Reagan. He doesn't even acknowledge his real name. Um, <laughs> no, I'm standing in solidarity with my man. I'm crossing out the E. I'm not even saying it because I, I feel so strongly about him leaving Hank. I don't give a shit, to be honest. He can go He can go eat a butt. Nice. That's my official, eat a butt. That's my official stance. Butt. <laughs> surely they surely they won their most recent game that came out uh, Tuesday night, right? Surely. They, there's no way they could have lost that. All right, Mary Fuck Kill, Queso Salsa Guacamole. Okay, uh, for me, this is easy. I marry Salsa, I fuck Queso. I'm the same. Bonk. And I kill Guac. I'm the same. I'm the same. And I like Guac, but bad Guac is really bad. And there's an important distinction in it, which I think we agree on. Queso has the highest ceiling. Mm-hmm. But in yep. terms of like what you can go to home to every single night, it's salsa. Also, salsa is more versatile than queso. I yes. think you can put it on a variety of dishes. Yes. Um, and if you're if you're killing guac, you can still eat avocado. Yeah. But you just can't have guacamole sometimes. All right, a couple more. Uh, on the 24 hour live stream last year, Billy cooked some terrible breakfast at 5 a.m. and watching him try to cook was hysterical. When are we getting some sort of barstool cook off to revisit that hilarious disaster? We should do it again. We will. Let's do it again. You, did Rosilla teach you how to make eggs? No, he didn't yet. But the way I make eggs, people have a problem with. I kind of make them like pancakes when I scramble them because I put the milk in, and then they kind of have that texture like pancakes. Well, no, you on you the burn. Outside. You it's, just, it's a you light make them crisp. Cr- yeah, you make it's them a like golden pancakes. finish. Um, we should do another cooking competition. Yes, though. just Billy verse no one. Just Billy versus the comment section. Billy, that would be funny. Billy versus the smoke detector. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Speaking of competition, are you guys going to do the season-long competition with a punishment again next year? I'm down. I mean, it'd have to be a punishment, but yeah, sure. Um, we could bring back the suit one. You remember we did the suit punishment? Yeah. What was that one for? I think I was you a gambling thing. Too. Oh, it was, yeah. yeah, it was me versus you. Um, speaking, of, Hank, did you ever work out in your Muggsy jeans after you lost the Grand Prix? Several times. Okay. Hmm. I I didn't well, I know my, because I, I didn't see any video. Really bad. I was almost dead. Uh, did you PT in the jeans? I'll do it on video this week. Maybe yeah. next week. It was a bet. Maybe the week after. It was a bet. Um, but yeah, we would probably do something next year. I don't know. I I think the best way to do it would be loser can't watch the Super Bowl. I mean, we have to do it for our job, though. That's kind of you can listen on the radio. No, because then by like week sixteen, you'd be like, I really just love li- like li- listening to Kevin Harlan on Westwood One. I do. He's. I mean, when the cat <laughs> ran across like, the field, that was pointless. Loser has to fly to the Super Bowl, but the other way around the earth, oh long wise. Oh my god. <laughs> Where's the Super Bowl? Uh, Is it Vegas? Nola. Arizona. I thought it was New Orleans. No, it's in Arizona. So you got to fly buses. over we Asia. Do buses. To get oh my god. to Arizona. Oh my god. We'll figure it out. Greyhound oh bus. God. Uh, all right, last one. What's up, Chad Cat, PFP, Honk, William, and Bubba Gump and Marshmallow? What is the most absurd piece of false information that Billy has tried to convince you was true? Mm, good question. The Tom Brady has thirty six playoff wins. <laughs> Watch I clip back, Billy. How's the hunt for the blue check mark going? I think they deleted the tweet. <laughs> I think I think you no did. seriously, seriously. I swear because I I wrote it down. But you realize you told us you told us like you explained exactly where you slipped up in your explanation, and then you were like, "But I gotta find who screwed me up." Because you're like, "What time was the game?" So you essentially said, "I saw someone tweet 35, and then I added one." No, no. So, no, what actually happened is I researched <laughs> yes. 30, 36 wins. Then I saw a tweet and saw what time it was posted. And I was like, was this before or after the game was over? To try to figure it out. But anyway. You researched 36 I wins? I just Googled 36 Tom Brady. And it said that the Packers had 36 playoff wins. Uh, I think. <laughs> what? 
what? But like I was looking, there's a whole bunch of stuff. But someone had tweeted <laughs> 36 wins. There, I there, know exactly there, how it went down. You won't just admit it. There were actual no, no, multiple it, sources that said it was 36 wins, but they all deleted their tweets. Yeah. No, no, that's okay. Never mind. You looked. It. Trust me. I. You saw someone say this will be. This is Tom Brady's thirty fifth uh, playoff win, or Tom Brady's has thirty five playoff wins, and you thought it happened before the game, and then you added one. Right at that moment, when I was checking on it, <laughs> but originally someone had posted thirty six wins. Got it. I think for me, it's uh, Billy tried to convince me that Anthony Fauci and Mother Teresa were in cahoots together. Mm. And then the article that I found linked to a website that said that Mother Teresa was actually Anthony Fauci's mother. <laughs> like, that, that that was her son. And then Billy couldn't provide a source for it that didn't link to an article uh, that was labeled under Satanism. So we fact-checked that one in real time. I think probably for me it was when... Uh I was negotiating Billy's salary with him, and he tried to convince why? me that he had a job offer no, for no, $150,000 a year. No, no, no. That's that. No, no, no. That, why do you keep bringing that up? It's just literally. No. That, it's, it's, I think I think Billy that, should. I think we should encourage Billy to, to, to not be ashamed for asking for raises. I, I agree. He no, got a raise. He's gotten I, the quickest raise in Barstool history. I haven't. That hasn't happened. I'm, okay, you, not you're going to get the, one. This is. No, this is like, I don't want to make like. All right, I'll do another one. All right, ready? No. I'll do another one. All right, the craziest thing Billy has convinced, tried to convince me of. Um, it was probably when we were doing the keto diet. And what was the thing that you gave me that was not keto? Uh, and then almonds it was, or something. Almonds yeah, and then you're peanuts, like, wait, almonds. hold on. Don't eat that. And then you came back. And you're like, all right, you're good to eat that. And it was just like, how? where did you, where'd you go to find that? Um, that was peak Billy. I loved that Billy. That was that was great Billy. Oh, Keto Billy. I'm still mad about the fact that elephants don't see humans the way we see dogs. I'm never oh, going to forget that because that yeah. that made my day when Billy told us that as our fun fact of the day. That warmed my heart. I felt like I was I was just re scrolling through the timeline of the dodo on Twitter. Yes, and then um, dogs, bro. And then Billy Billy took that away from me. I do want to go back on Keto Billy. Ben Mintz is currently in ketosis. He is? Yes. Wow. He's been having the Breaking flu. Breaking news. Have you been checking his piss? He's, well, we're going to get to that, but he's, I put him on straight keto. He's not allowed to eat anything else. Mm -hmm. He has a certain amount of meals, and he's probably going to be in ketosis by the time we test him. Okay, so you haven't checked his keto levels yet, but he's going through the keto flu. Is it he's, possible he's that showing he, signs. Is it possible he just has COVID? His breath stinks, <laughs> and he's been <laughs> lethargic. Yeah, you his might have. His breath stinks. He, he might are you just, smelling his breath? Sick. He has the metallic <laughs> smell of ketosis. So are you going in, like, checking his breath? No, he's been checking it. <laughs> I did love, yeah, like, when, when we first did ketosis, that was... A very funny moment in time when you were 18 and <laughs> learning it as we went. And it was like you'd hand me something and I'd start to you'd be like, wait, hold on one sec. And you'd run to your computer and then you'd run back. And you're like, OK, you can eat that. <laughs> you know where he got that from, right? And so much comes into picture once you start listening to just a little bit of Joe Rogan yeah. to get an insight into Billy's brain. <laughs> Joe Rogan had been on ketosis well, actually... at the time and he was like, <laughs> you know what's a really good diet to help you out? Is just ketosis. Oh. It was literally from he was just translating the Joe Rogan podcast into our ears. I didn't actually listen to Joe Rogan until I started working on this podcast because then I didn't have a podcast to listen to once I started working on this podcast. So that actually made me listen to more Joe Rogan. Who who do you like better? If Joe Rogan called you up today, I was and asked and asked you to have your exact same role on the Joe Rogan experience. No, no. what do you do? I wouldn't do that. Ten thousand dollars. I would say take it. No, it was a lot. It was a lot of fun listening to this that's podcast a live in the your, car. That's like be your be, that's live your best life though. Like that would be the best life. No. Yes. No. If you got to like be a, a scientist on Joe Rogan's staff, like live in I would, his compound I'd in Austin, I'd make Texas. you take that job. I'd be like, Billy, you have to take this job. It would be like uh, uh, Goodwill Hunting. Like yeah. I, like, if I, if you I know, see the, you the here tomorrow, yeah, the best part of my day is when I come in and I. I, I don't see you. I think for a second you're not going to be at your desk because you're going to be doing test tube studies for Joe Rogan in Austin. I <laughs> Billy, <laughs> if, your job cool. would be like, okay, Billy, I need you to go out and I need you to bow hunt for me. <laughs> <laughs> and all you're, all you're responsible for is bringing meat to me tonight and then sitting in the background of a podcast and 
like injecting one fun fact in when you hear it. That'd be like if they offered me the Price is Right host. I'd be like, sorry, guys. It's the one thing I'm going to take. You would do that? Yeah. It's, it's the greatest game show of all time. Hmm. Be incredible. You get to work like what? Like Drew Carey probably works like 20 days a year. Well, it's like Pat they tape a bunch on yeah. Wheel of Fortune. I think Wheel of Fortune is even easier because you tape like I think you tape three days a month. And then you just go back. Yeah. And that's it. Be incredible. What about you, Jake? If you got offered a job. Well, we know. Fucking Sports business reporter, a part of my take. Mm. That's your dream job. That's the end of the line for you. The Toledo Mud Hens could offer him no. play-by-play and he'd be out no. the door. You get play-by-play for the Yankees. but <laughs> I mean, you'd have to take that. If any of the four major sports offered you a play-by-play job, you'd have to take it. And I'd make you take it. Same thing. I would Same deal with Billy. I'd be like... You have to take it. All right. See ya. That's a fact. Yeah. You to break my heart, but you got to do it. We'll see. What if What if they all unionized and went on strike, and they asked you to be a scab, play by play guy for the New York Yankees? Do you Do you cross the picket line? It would depend. Yeah, you would. No, we'll see. We'll I don't see. know. And Hank, if you, if Ben Simmons started a podcast and asked you to produce, <laughs> I would make you go take it. Fair enough. <laughs> Imagine that mm-hmm. just every day talking about what he didn't do on a basketball like court. a resort company yeah. contacts me. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I'd be like, no, sorry. Yeah, we, we actually we need a we need a water slide tester, <laughs> <laughs> a beach chair warmer. <laughs> just right. Actually, they could, you probably have enough followers on Instagram where they could you could probably just be a, a resort influencer where you go on vacations, post pictures of you in the water. Drinking a, a frozen concoction, and then that's your life. It's crossed my mind. Yeah. They cross everyone's mind. Just li- own a bar, maybe a bowling alley in the Bahamas where no, everyone I'd, loves I'd, to I'd bowl. I'd own one of those, like, uh, like pedal boats that, like, cruises by people on the beach and, and hands out, like, pineapple drinks. And cocaine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah I mean, that's For the record, that. I'm not ever going to leave this show unless it's if, – if I got a job offer to be, like, a, a train conductor. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> All right. We'll see everyone on Friday. You get to wear the hat. Are we not doing ping pong balls? Oh, yeah. 88. I've done so many today. I forgot. 44. 6. 22. You know what? Yeah, 22. 12. 12. 888. 60. Holy shit. I thought that was 69 for a second. Second time. 60. Love you guys. Footballs are not actually made out of pig skin, but rather beef bladder in the old days. Love you guys.